गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू गुड मॉर्निंग पे अटेंशन प्लीज Now we started with the discussion of depreciation in the last lecture. So let's move ahead with that discussion itself. Obviously, now one of the primary condition to claim depreciation under the block scheme, because we are following the concept of block, we are not following the concept of individual asset. We are computing depreciation on a block of an asset. So one of the primary condition to claim depreciation under the block scheme is as follows. Pay attention, please. when can depreciation be claimed there are two conditions which you have to fulfill two condition one is the block this is something which you might have done in ca inter also definitely you would have done the block of asset must be positive on the last day that is on the last day of the financial year that is on 31st march 2023 the block of asset must be positive positive in what sense the block of asset must have a value which is positive it should not become negative i'll explain you with numbers second the block must not cease to exist on the last day it means the quantity of the block the number of assets in the block does should not become zero there has to be at least one asset in the block on 31st march so the two conditions if i sum up both of both of them then it will come like this on the last day whichever block it is plant and machinery furniture building etc on the last day you make two columns one is quantity column one is amount column okay the quantity column should not become zero there has to be at least one asset in the block is it clear even one asset is sufficient and the amount column amount column should not become negative it has to be positive 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 let me give you an ideal situation this is an ideal situation okay opening wdv of the asset is nil okay then i purchase two assets during the year for 2 lakh rupees i sold nothing then everything is zero over here then at the end of the year my quantity is 2 and my value is also positive therefore i am eligible for a depreciation of 10% on furniture is it clear is it clear now listen carefully take a situation where we will try to violate one of the conditions my opening wdv is suppose nil i purchase two assets for 2 lakh everything is same till here now suppose if i sell one asset for 3 lakh is it possible I sold one asset for three lakh rupees. Is it possible? So now the quantity column is still positive, but the amount column has become negative. Can you see this? I cannot claim depreciation. In such case, you will be liable for capital gains. What? Capital gains as per the block method. We will be looking at that sometime later, not today. Okay. Now take one more example. We you, you have purchased two assets. Okay. you have purchased two assets for 2 lakh and you have sold both of them so the quantity became zero okay but you sold both of them for just 1 lakh so the amount is still positive but this is not sufficient there has to be at least one asset over here right right and the amount should also be positive both the conditions have to be fulfilled if either of the conditions is not fulfilling you will not get the depreciation and you will be liable for a capital gains under section 50 therefore the ideal situation is here this is the ideal situation you have two quantity and you have 2 lakh rupees so the amount column is also positive and the quantity column is also not zero is everyone clear if either of the two conditions are not fulfilled then you will be liable for capital gains which we will be talking about in the chapter of capital gains okay okay now pay attention please pay attention all of you there was one assessor see just a second now there was one assessor listen this story very carefully all of you please avisha listen this story carefully and you try to explain me why the assessor is doing so why the hell is doing so i am telling his act what is he trying to do pay attention on the board please 
There was an SSC who bought some building of say 100 crores. He used that building for business. Okay. After he used that building for business, he did not claim depreciation. He said, I do not want depreciation. He said, I do not want depreciation. Should department have any problem? Should department have any problem? Please tell. Please tell, beta. Should department have any problem? Why they should not have any problem? Because if somebody is saying, I do not want deduction, then what problem will department will have? He is not asking for deduction. He is not asking for deduction. He is saying, I do not want deduction. That is good for department, na, beta. So, he said, I do not want deduction. Okay. Okay, fine. The assessing officer, that is the income tax officer, said that you have to take deduction. You have to claim depreciation. Now, this is a very practical issue. Please listen carefully with logic. There are a lot of people in the industry who are making mistakes like this. What I am going to say eventually at the end of this discussion. Very recently, one of our, not my client, one of my friend's client was doing this mistake. So, I pointed out this. Do not do this, department will kill you. I am telling you what, I am coming to that discussion in a while. Now, AO is saying that you have to claim depreciation. Assess is saying, I do not want. The matter went to Supreme Court. The Assess filed a claim to Supreme Court. Appealed to Supreme Court, claiming that I do not want depreciation. And the Supreme Court said in 2000, that claim of depreciation is what is optional. Claim of depreciation is what? Optional. It is not mandatory for you to claim depreciation. Not mandatory at all. So, who won the case? Who won the case? Assessi won the case, right? The government of India made an amendment in Finance Act 2021 overriding this judgment. First of all, let me ask you one question if you know. Can the government of India override a judgment of Supreme Court and make a law? Ajal, is it possible? Yes, the government has the power to override the judgment of Supreme Court and make a law in the parliament through a parliamentary process. Government override the law and in Finance Act 2001, government put an explanation in Section 32.1 saying that it is mandatory to claim depreciation. It is mandatory to claim depreciation. Now, the question is, are they all gone mad? Is the government mad? Is the SASI mad? As do not want deduction, government is forcing to take the deduction, then the government is making a law that you have to take the deduction. We need to understand the reason behind it. One person can be mad, not everybody can be mad. Department is also mad, SSE is also mad, law making process is also mad, everybody is mad. There has to be something behind this which we are not able to see. Can you please tell me why, why and why the SSC do not want to claim depreciation even though he is using the asset for the purpose of business? Please tell. Or else I will speak. Shall I? Listen carefully now. I am making two options here. I am I am comparing two things over here. Suppose if I if I assess he claimed depreciation on this building, what is the worth of the building? 100 crore. Okay. So how much depreciation he will get every year? 10%, right, beta? 10% depreciation he will get every year. Right. Say after 10 years, the WDV of the building is how much? Say, say 30 crore. Okay. 
Can I take a random number? I am taking a random number. Okay. Now, what benefit I have got over the 10 years? What benefit I have got? Can I say I get a benefit of 70 crore depreciation over the year? Over the years, over 10 years, right? On that 70 crore, can I say 30% tax I have saved? That is 21 crore I have saved. A very basic calculation, right? Now, see the disadvantages of claiming depreciation. After 10 years, if you sell this asset, say for 250 crore, okay? Building a building the value will increase in future, right? So at that time, because the building is a part of what block, you have to compute depreciation as per block. And in block, what happens? You know, sale consideration 250 crore minus directly compare with WDV. This is the way of calculating block to capital gains minus directly 30 crore. This will be 220 crore. This will be directly short term capital gains. So now, what will happen when you sell the building? First of all, you will not get the deduction of cost of acquisition of 100 crore. You will have to reduce your WDV, which will be lower than your cost, right? Secondly, if you remember from CA Inter, the gain in the block of asset is always STCG. In block of asset, the gain is always STCG because of which, because of which, you will always be liable for higher tax rate. Because short term capital gains are chargeable at a higher rate as compared to long term capital gains. I do not know whether you know this or not. Thirdly, if, it, if an asset is a part of block, you do not get the claim of indexation also. So, you have to be compromising with lower WDV. You have to be compromising with STCG instead of LTCG even though the asset is long term. Yes or no? And there is no indexation available to you. So, at the benefit of one small benefit of depreciation, I am losing so many things. Can you see this? So, the assessee says that I do not want depreciation. Do not put my asset in the block. <laughs> I do not want depreciation. Do not put my asset in the block. Because if I put my asset in the block, I will have to do what? Claim depreciation and then I, I will have to lose these benefits in future whenever I will sell the asset. So, department said what they said. We are making an amendment under the income tax law. That claim of depreciation is what? Please say it is mandatory. You have to claim. If you are using an asset for the purpose of business, you have to claim depreciation. Now, there are so many people in the industry who use asset for the business. In fact, their building is registered in GST also. That this is the official business premise. <laughs> okay. But they do not claim depreciation. With the fear that once they start to claim depreciation, they will have to do what? Put the asset in the block, right? You just imagine now you have an office of 1 crore rupees, okay? And you use that for the purpose of business. You will get depreciation every year. But that office will become always short term. Whenever you will sell that office, you will not be liable for what? You will not be liable for indexation. Even though office prices will increase, right? It is an immobile property. Whenever you will sell the asset, the office will always be short term. You will always have to pay higher tax as compared to long term capital gains. So, many people do not consider that as a business asset, even though they are using for business. That is wrong. If assessing officer finds that during the assessment, he will deliberately put that asset in the block. Did you understand what I said? Please tell me. Okay. So, you can see this over here. It is mandatory to claim depreciation. Is it clear? Yes, beta. That we will talk. That we will talk in the chapter of capital gains. Don't worry, beta. That I will be saying. Okay, don't worry. Why it cannot be called as long term and why it will be called as short term? Okay, that I will speak. Or you just remember this question. I will also remember. Don't worry. But whenever we will be doing capital gains calculations of block of asset, I'll be speaking that. Okay. Now coming to this first page, beta. All of you come. On the first page, what I told you yesterday, is the word building defined? The answer is no. Is the word machinery defined? The answer is no. Is the word furniture defined? The answer is no. Is the word plant defined? Please tell me. The answer is yes. Where is it defined, sir? It is defined in 43 subsection 3. Okay. Now, let me tell you the story of this also. This is also a very beautiful story. Shall I start? We learn the subject like a story. Assume that every morning you are coming for a Netflix episode. 
okay come listen and go but don't forget like netflix remember okay you have to remember you don't have to forget it now listen carefully i'll explain you this with a logic we'll try to understand the entire subject in a logical way not in just in a theoretical way it's a beautiful subject here it is useful for life listen carefully shall i start sir what do you mean by the term plant the word plant is there under income tax law in 43.3 but in an inclusive manner there is no meaning of plant meaning of plant is not there under the income tax law what is there under the income tax law is only and only and only a list of asset which can be called as plant clear now so if i want to understand the meaning of the term plant where will i go i will go to the dictionary and if i go to the dictionary and if i read the meaning of the term plant what is written in the dictionary listen carefully all of you please listen carefully plant means any tool or apparatus plant means any this is the dictionary meaning oxford dictionary you can open and you can check plant means any tool or apparatus which is necessary to perform any function any tool and apparatus which is necessary to perform any function is plant now with that definition even this pencil is plant right it is a tool which is necessary to perform my business function agreed agreed this chair is also a plant it is a tool which is necessary to perform my function i cannot stand over here for 6 hours and take lecture that is not possible for me practically that i do in class but not in studio in class students are there so i can stand in studio i cannot stand this is necessary for me this laptop is a tool which is necessary to discharge business functions right this camera is a tool which is necessary to discharge business function this is the definition of plant okay as per the as per what dictionary as per dictionary this is the definition plant means i am writing over here an apparatus or tool which is necessary to discharge a business function now just listen carefully what some of some of the assassins used to say there are three special assassins who used to make a special demand listen carefully the, the demand of those special assassins just keep this particular definition in your mind all of you please keep this definition in your mind all of you please okay now listen to the demand of the three special assassins shall i listen carefully there is a theater who says that our building our building is a specially designed building it's not a normal building it's a very special and unique building for which we have to make a separate building for the purpose of theater we have to make a separate unique building in we have to put projector screen in which we have to put acs in which we have to put so many chairs etc 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 so it's a unique building it's not a normal building do you agree to this please tell me so he says that a normal building cannot become a theater for theater you need to have a unique building you cannot make your building your uh, your residential society a theater it is not possible is it possible can you make a, your residential society a theater you have to demolish that make a special building right so what assessi is arguing arguing listen the argument and the thinking of the assessi this is how you should think after one year when you become a chartered accountant this is how your thinking should go in the industry what the assessi is thinking over here just imagine assessi is saying that this entire structure is a tool for me to conduct a business function this entire structure is a apparatus for me to conduct business function and this entire structure is my what this entire structure is one tool which is necessary to discharge business function and therefore this entire structure we can be called as what please tell me plant and why is he saying so so that he can get a depreciation of 15 percent on the entire structure because plant is depreciated at 15 percent generally right please tell me so he's trying to make the entire structure as one single plant so if he's trying to make the entire structure as one single plant 
He is trying to say that the chairs which are kept in the theater, those are also plant. The building is also plant. But otherwise, if you see building is depreciated at 10%, the chairs that is furniture which is also depreciated at 10%, right? Similarly, another assessi. Hospital. Hospital is also saying that our building is a specialized design building. Do you agree? A normal building cannot be converted into a hospital because for that you need to specially design the rooms, specially design the operation theater, medical, then all those uh, pathologies, etc, 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 testing centers, you have to make all those things, right? So, again, the assessor is saying my entire structure is one single plant and give me depreciation at the rate of 15% on the entire structure. Similarly, third assessor, hotel assessor, which assessor is? Hotel Assasi also says that, 5 star hotel, 4 star hotel, they say that our building is specially designed building, do you agree? Because there has to be separate rooms, different kind of rooms, there has to be restaurants, there has to be banquet, conference hall, etc, etc, right? Which is again a specially designed building, so they also say our entire building is one apparatus or tool which is necessary to discharge business function, therefore what? Allow me depreciation on the entire hotel as a plant and allow me depreciation at the rate of 15%. Even the Supreme Court said that it is allowed, you can take that, but the government did not like it. The government does not want to give depreciation of 15% on the entire structure. Government wants you to segregate the asset into different category. Building will be depreciated 10%, furniture 10%, plant and machinery 15%. Do not consider these building, hospital building, theatre building and hotel building as a part of plant. Okay, shall I go ahead? Now, a very funny question. I am sorry to ask you this question because this is thought by the assassins. So, I have to ask you. Shall I? Beta Bhavisha Kajal? Julie? Kajal, what is volume? Okay, okay. Thank you. Listen carefully, all of you, please. Shall I? Now, what assassin is taking the definition of plant literally? Literally, he is taking the definition of plant. Now, I would, I would not blame him for this. I would like to ask you all. What do you, what is the first thing that will come to your mind if I say plant? If I say plant, what is the first thing that will come to your mind? Please tell me three, right? <laughs> three, yes or no? So, Asasi was engaged in the business of tea, tea manufacturing. What tea? Chai. Tea, tea manufacturing. Okay. So, for that, Asasi is uh, growing some teas, etc., tea plants, tea bushes. Okay. So, he is saying that my tea bushes are my plant and I want depreciation of 15% on that. Did you understand what kind of thinking the Asasi is having? You will find all kind of funny assassins in this world. You will find out all kind of different kind of Atarangi and Ajeeb Kisam of assassin officers also over the time. Don't worry about it. You will find all of them. Don't think that assassins are very intelligent or the department is very intelligent. Don't think like that. It is not like that. Therefore, pay attention please. Pay attention. The government made an amendment. Amendment in what? In the definition of plant. Let us come to the definition of plant all of you. See here, page number 2.5, plant. Forty-three-three defines plant. Plant to include what? Ships, okay. Vehicle, okay. Books, okay. Scientific apparatus is plant, okay. Surgical equipment is plant, used for the purpose of business or profession, but does not include, does not include what? The government is excluding few things. Which things are excluded? The first thing which the government is excluding is tea bushes. Remove this. That cannot be called as plant. Or livestock. Livestock cannot be called as plant because they have a special benefit later on. A special deduction is given to them. Third is building. Building is removed. Are you able to understand? Furniture is removed, fitting is removed because these are depreciable at 10%, right? 
and you can read in the bracket at your end if you want. You can read the remaining paragraph why the government has done so and it was done in 2003. You do not have to remember all those things when it was done. Just try to remember the current year amendments. Do not remember the, the, remember the old amendments. Forget about the old one. Okay. Is it clear? Now, one last thing for as of now that I would like to ask you one question. Please try to answer better, all of you. How good will come in business? How good will come? Do you know that good will come when you acquire a business? Do you agree to this? When you acquire a business, you make excess payment to the other party and good will comes, right? So, the government thought that these transactions are generally of billions of dollars of crores of rupees. Do you agree to this? The acquisition transactions are of huge amount and the goodwill portion is, is in crores and crores of rupees, 500 crore, 1000 crore. Government does not want to give depreciation on that because that becomes a very big amount. Yes or no? That becomes a very, very, very big amount. Do you agree to that or not? So, just last to last year, from 2020-21 onwards, before that, depreciation was allowed on goodwill. But from this year onwards, the government removed the de definition of goodwill, uh, the mention of goodwill from the list of assets. You can check over here. Check here. From which year? From previous year 2021. You can write this over there. Okay. So, now in 20 to 23, you do not get depreciation on goodwill. Please be aware of that. You do not get depreciation on goodwill. Earlier it was available. Now, it is removed because the government is feeling that there is lot of depreciation that the SSE can claim and then can lead to lot of loss of revenue to the government of India. That is the reason they have removed goodwill from the list of assets. Okay. Now, let us go ahead to the main section once again. Can I say to claim depreciation, you need to be the owner of the asset, right? Please tell. Yes, so the question will arise, what do you mean by the term owner? Unfortunately, the term owner is not defined in the income tax law. It is not defined, but it is used at multiple places. Even in the chapter of house property, can I say if you want to be covered in the cha chapter of house property, you should, be, you should be the owner of the house property. But even there, the owner word is not defined. Then what is the definition of the term owner? The definition of the term owner, unfortunately, not defined in the law. But the Supreme Court in this case has defined the term owner. That is this case. Remember this case. It is a very landmark and very important judgment. Mesur Minerals Limited. And what is the judgment given in this case? Listen carefully the facts of the case. I am asking you a question. Please try to answer. There was an assessee who purchased the building. He paid the amount. He took the possession. Okay. And he also used the building for business. So, the building is purchased by the SSE. He paid the amount. He took the possession and he also used the building for business purpose. Is it clear? But one thing is pending. And that is after purchasing the building, you have to register that building, right? You have to do registration of that. The registration was not done. It was done after few months. So, I have a question to you all. What do you feel? Should I SSE get the deduction here or he should get the deduction after getting the registration? After the registration or now? Kajal? Before registration, he should get the deduction. But he is not the owner. He have the possession, he have paid the money. That is sufficient evidence. Bhavisha, the term owner is not defined in the law. Then how are you defining the term ownership? In the law, it is not defined beta. Okay. Anything else that can come from your side? I have got both the answers. One is, so take today itself. Because the SSE has took, uh, took the possession, he has paid the money, he is using the asset for the purpose of business. Second is, 
do not take do not take and do what take the deduction when the property is registered right i don't know the correct answer because the law does not say anything law does not define the word owner the moment the law will define the word owner the matter will be closed right but it is unfortunately not defined today today it is not defined so what am i supposed to do now i am supposed to go to the court now if there is no definition please tell me there will be litigations right there will be dispute and the matter went to the court listen carefully and read this paragraph what do you feel after reading this paragraph read all of you please a very landmark judgment why am i saying landmark all judgments are not landmark landmark means a very great judgment which comes once in a while which is saying such things which are not said by the law which is missing in the law that judgment is said by that something which is missing in the law and the judge says that those judgments can be called as a landmark judgment So, what does the judgment say, beta? As per the income tax law, the Supreme Court says that ownership means the date on which you have the right on the asset, the possession on the asset, registration, title, all of them are what? Irrelevant under the income tax law, correct? Registration title is of no use under the income tax law. What is relevant is you should have control over the asset, right? You should have the right to use the asset. If you have the right to use the asset, you can claim depreciation, okay? So, similarly, there are two more questions which will arise over here. I will address here itself. Who will claim depreciation in case you lease some asset to someone? In case of lease, there is a lesser and there is a lessee, right? So, who will claim depreciation in case of lesser and lessee? It is the lesser who will claim depreciation in case of lease transaction. This is said by a CBDT circular. CBDT has issued a circular for the same, okay? And who will claim depreciation in case of higher purchaser? In case of higher purchaser, there is a vendor and there is a buyer, right? So, in this case also, there is a CBDT circular which was issued in 1943, long back, around 70 years back, 80 years back now, which says that the claim of depreciation in case of higher purchase will be made by the purchaser. That is the buyer. Buyer will claim depreciation. Is it clear? Is it clear? So, in case of lease transaction, it will be claimed by the lesser. In case of higher purchase transaction, it will be claimed by the purchaser. Is it clear? But still the court says, but still the government says that this is for general purpose. If there is a specific case, then you have to look into the facts and circumstances of every case and then decide who will claim depreciation. So, there is one very good case law. Listen carefully. Very good case law. Pay attention on the board, on this particular issue only. There was an associate by the name called as ICDS Limited. This is a company and this is an NBFC company, non-banking financial company, okay? Now, what is it involved in? It is involved in leasing cars, leasing cars. Now, what kind of cars are leased over here? A long-term lease, if you are aware of these days, all those who buy generally luxury cars, luxury cars like BMW, Mercedes, they buy on lease, they buy on lease. What happens on lease? That if you buy, if you go and buy a luxury car, you will not get below 50 to 60 lakh rupees. At least you will be, you will have to pay 50 to 60 lakhs. Now, I don't want to pay 50 to 60 lakhs outrightly today. Okay. And I don't want to take a loan also. I don't want to take a loan. So, I can go and take on lease. So what happens in lease? Listen carefully. You have to tell to the company, I want this car. The company will buy that car for you. Okay. Company will buy that car and company will give you. You have to pay monthly lease rentals to the company. The car will not be yellow plated. It will be white plated. Otherwise, otherwise what is the use of, uh, of driving a BMW, a yellow plated BMW? It is of no use. That plate matters a lot. If you are, if, Why people drive luxury cars? Obviously, to show off. There is nothing else in that except to show off. Comfort wise, it is almost same only like a mid-range car. There is nothing great in that. Ha, it might have a power, it might run very fast, but where you will run in Mumbai? 
वेर यू विल एस्केप फ्रॉम द ऑटो रिक्शा वाला प्लीज टेल मी कैन यू एस्केप फ्रॉम द ऑटो रिक्शा वाला फ्रॉम द बाइक वाला यू कैन नॉट सो इट इज जस्ट फॉर द सेक ऑफ शो ऑफ देर इज नथिंग एल्स ओके सो I want a luxury car, so I will go to a company. I'll go to BMW, and I'll say I want a luxury car. What will BMW do? BMW give me a new car, brand new car. They will give me brand new car with white plated car, not yellow plated. And the registration of the car will be in my name, customer's name. Whose name? Customer's name, not in the name of BMW. And they will tell me that this much is the lease rental every year. Say eighty thousand rupees every month you have to pay. 80,000 into 12 is the total annual rental that you have to pay for the entire year. Is it clear? Now the maintenance headache is of the company. Insurance headache is of the company. Every headache is with the company. You do, you have to do only two things: put petrol and drive. That's it. You don't have to do anything else. Everything is company's headache. So this company is engaged in similar similar business model. Shall I start? Here there is a company. Here here there is a customer. So the company is leasing cars to whom? Please tell customers on a long-term basis. And the registration is in the name of customers, right? Right. Now, at the end of the lease period, obviously you will return the cars because it's on lease. You have not purchased it. The lease is of generally. Two years, three years, four years, maximum five years, not more than that. You have to return the car. So this as a C claim depreciation. Okay, this as a C claim the depreciation. Now the assessing officer is saying that you cannot claim depreciation. I said why? Assessing officer said that to claim depreciation, assessor has to fulfill two conditions. Condition number one: the assessor should be the owner of the asset, right? Just now we have seen that the AO says that you are not the owner. Owner is the customer, right? You are not the owner. Owner is the customer. Therefore, you cannot claim the depreciation. Second condition is the funniest condition in this world. The AO said that the assessee should use the car for the purpose of business and profession, right? Now the AO is saying the car is not driven by the assessee, but it is driven by the customer. The car is not driven by the assessee, na? It is driven by the customer, right? So that uh, AO is saying, assessing officer, the car is used by customer and not the assessee. Assessee cannot claim depreciation. And the matter went to Supreme Court in 2012. Supreme Court said for the first condition, owner. Supreme Court said that owner is not defined first of all, and owner means beneficial owner and not legal owner. So do not see whose name is there in the registration certificate. Do not see that. See that who owns the asset over the time. Does the assessee has the right on the asset? Yes, the assessee has the right on the car. Does the assessee going to get back the car after the term ends? Yes. If the assessee would have not been the owner, assessee would have not got the car back. Because the assessee is owner, then only the assessee is getting the car back after the lease period, na? Otherwise, he would have not got that particular car back. Therefore, the court held that do not see the ownership just on the paper. Go beyond paper and check whether the assessee is owner or not. So assessee is owner in absolute terms, not on on registered terms. In registered term, the customer is is the owner because that is the requirement of Motor Vehicle Act. What does Motor Vehicle Act says that if you give a car on lease to someone for a long term, register that car in that person's name because he is using that for long term, right? He might do anything wrong with that car. He might get into an accident. He might do a crime with that car. So whom the government will catch? Why BMW will be responsible for everyone? That is just a requirement under the Motor Vehicle Act to register the car in the name of customer. That does not mean that the customer has become the owner. The very fact that the customer is returning the vehicle, it means that customer is not the owner. Yes or no? The second, the funniest condition. What does the assessing officer says in the second condition? The car is not used by the assessee. Is the depart is the department mad or what? If my business is of leasing, my business is of what? I will only drive the car. Then how will I make money? The court says that the asset should be used for business. Does not mean that the asset should be used by the assessee himself. It means it should be used in the course of the business. 
and a leasing business use of asset is what is to lease the asset na not to drive the car itself if i am into a leasing business i will not use that particular asset myself i will lease that asset and let other use that asset and then i will earn the money right usage does not mean actual usage by the ssc usage does not mean that usage means in the course of the business is the leasing company using the car in the course of its business Is the SSE using the car in the course of its business? Is the SSE using it for its business by leasing it? The answer is yes. And therefore, the court said that both the conditions are fulfilled. The SSE is eligible for what? Depreciation. You can come to this page and read this case law. Page number 2.3, all of you. Case law number 7. Is it clear? Please tell. Is it clear? Now coming to this main paragraph once again. Asset must be used for the purpose of business, right? So the question is what do you mean by the term? What? Use. So the government says that use will include both active use as well as passive use. Active use will come and a passive use will also come. What do you mean by active use? Active use means something which I am actually using. This laptop which is there in front of me is actively used. So, I can claim depreciation on that. This iPad is actively used. I can claim depreciation on that. But there is one laptop in spare kept at home. Is it necessary for me? Not necessary, Bhavisha. Cancel Kardu lecture. Agar laptop kharab ho gaya. Sparewala is necessary for my business or not? Is a spare tire is a spare tire necessary in a car? Yes, it is not used. It is not used, but is it required in emergency situation? Similarly, in business, there are machineries which are there in factory. Should there be some emergency part kept in the factory? Please tell. Those are passively used for the business. Those are also allowed for the purpose of what? Depreciation. Allowed. So, the laptop which I am using right now is actively used. Another laptop is kept over here, which is not used. It is kept aside. In case this does not work, I will use with that. Okay. So, that will also be eligible for depreciation. Do not worry. Okay. Now, one last thing over here. Suppose, if you have purchased a machinery. And after purchasing the machinery, obviously, you need what? Raw material to manufacture something. Only machine cannot make anything. You need material for that, right? So, you have purchased the machinery and you go to the market now, listen carefully, to buy raw material and there is shortage of raw material. Can it happen? 
in the entire market the raw material is in shortage it is not available so because of the shortage of raw material i am not able to use the machinery and this is a extraordinary reason right because of some extraordinary reason i am not able to use the machinery so what will happen i purchase the machinery i am willing to use that machinery for the purpose of business but because of the shortage of machinery i am not able to use it so the madras high court has held that that if you are not able to use a machinery because of shortage of material then you can claim what you can claim the depreciation that is not your mistake that there is a shortage in the market did you understand that is not your mistake that there is a shortage in the market is it clear to everyone so now whatever we have done so far let us sum it up from here that is in your book that is colored book come over here whatever we have done so far at least so far we have not done much in depreciation but still whatever we have done chapter 2 depreciation first of all i told you yesterday there are four types of depreciation right right then i told you what do you mean by the term owner just now clear then i told you in case of lease transaction lesser will claim in case of higher purchase higher purchaser will claim then i told you about this small judgment icds limited right just now then i just now told you about use use means active and passive both if due to some extraneous reason like shortage of raw material depreciation would be allowable clear then this block chart here you can circle other than goodwill of business and profession you will not get depreciation on goodwill okay okay then the rates of depreciation we have seen yesterday right then when depreciation become half that also we have seen do not forget this word that right then definition of plant we have seen today that plant does not include tea bushes livestock building furniture correct then when depreciation can be claimed amount column and quantity column has to be positive and last but not least it is mandatory to claim depreciation it is not optional you have to claim depreciation clear so shall i go ahead now okay so i am now starting with a next discussion and that is section 32 subsection 1 clause 2a and that is additional depreciation okay yes yeah yeah sure ask it is not necessary actually put yes you can claim depreciation of that yes you can claim provided that asset should be necessary for the purpose of business that is a requirement of the business okay now additional depreciation let us talk about that additional depreciation came in 2005 for the first time for whom it is there pay attention please all of you i am telling you for whom it is there it is there for assessees engaged in if an assessee is engaged in manufacturing what or production or generation or distribution of power these are the assessees to whom additional depreciation is allowable. Is it clear? Assessees engage in manufacturing, production or generation or distribution of power. That is it. Are these business necessary for the country? Is manufacturing necessary? Very much necessary. Is production of power, generation of power necessary? Yes, to these businesses government has said that if you purchase and use a new plant and machinery what 
what then along with normal depreciation you will get normal depreciation how much normal depreciation generally you get on new plant and machinery generally there are multiple plant and machineries generally 15 percent so you will get additional 20 percent additional 20 percent that is only for one year not this is not available every year please tell let me tell you very clearly so if i purchase and put to use in the current year then i will get in the current year not in the subsequent year from subsequent year i can claim the normal one but not the additional additional is one time benefit right so now without saying anything further let me read the section properly then only i will make a conclusion come to the section page number 2.8 all of you please Two point eight. Let us read this much first. Please read from year to year along with me. In case of any new box, put in box any new machinery or plant other than ship and aircraft, ship and aircraft is removed. Okay, it means ship and aircraft are not eligible for what additional depreciation, right? which has been acquired and installed by an SSC engaged in the business of manufacturing and production of any article or thing, engaged in the business of what, any article or thing, right. So, I would like to ask you, leave, leave everything here, I would like to ask you, will I get additional depreciation if I, if I manufacture alcohol? बेटा इरम खुद के नाम से आया कर मेरे को कैसे समझेगा कौन है डॉक्टर फरत था कोई मुझे बता देती बेटा मेरे को मैसेज कर देती तो मैं देख लेता उसमें क्या है मैसेज किया था क्या तूने लेक्चर के बाद किया शायद ओके अच्छा नो नो मुझे इनकन्वीनियंस नहीं हो गया आपको हो गया बेटा आपका लेक्चर मिस हो गया उतना वैसे ठीक है नथिंग ग्रेट यू हैव मिस्ड इट्स ओके ठीक है ओके बेटा पे अटेंशन प्लीज ऑल ऑफ यू कैन आई मैन्युफैक्चर अल्कोहल तो बैक गो विल आई गेट एडिशनल डेप्रिसिएशन व्हाई नो भविष्य वेल इट इज रिटर्न व्हाई आर यू सो अगेन सेल कॉल यार where is it written please tell me what is written in the law manufacture or produce what anything right yes or no then why you are saying no to alcohol or tobacco or cigarette i am not saying drugs drugs is not allowed but alcohol is allowed in most of the parts of this country so anything means but beta anything means anything ah beta if the law wants to make an exception they will make it right now they have not made any exception okay so anything means literally anything everything that the law wants can be covered over here any product which is legal product not drugs okay even arms and ammunition can be covered here that is also an allowed thing to be manufactured okay so, you will get a further sum of 20% of the actual cost of such plant and machinery shall be allowed as deduction under 3212. So, in 3212, you get normal depreciation, right? 1 to you get, you will get further 20% additional depreciation. Clear? So, henceforth, I will use the following questions. You have to answer me like this. Pay attention, please. First question. Eligible business, what you will answer? Not any business, business is not any, product is any, eligible business, trading business is not covered, na beta. eligible business, manufacture of production or power generation, power distribution, power transmission, right, eligible asset, will you get additional depreciation on purchase of furniture, 
Will you get additional depreciation on purchase of building? Then what you are supposed to purchase? Just a second. The voice is breaking. So, eligible asset is new plant and machinery other than ship and aircraft, right? So, you will get additional 20% depreciation along with the normal one. Normal one nobody can take from you. You will get normal depreciation along with the additional depreciation, okay? Okay? Now, there are certain plant and machineries which are excluded from this definition. You, these are negative list, you can say. Which list? Negative list. Shall I read? These machineries are not eligible for what? Additional depreciation. Already ships and aircrafts are outside the scope, right? Now, there are few more machineries which the government has excluded. First, any machinery or plant which before its installation by the SSE was either used within India or outside India by any other person, it means what? Second hand plant and machinery, not allowed. It means you have to buy very clearly, it is written new, new and new, right? Additional depreciation is not available on second hand plant and machinery. Now, an SSE will make an argument. I have imported a second hand plant and machinery from Japan. So, this machinery of Japan, which is second hand, which is much better than the first hand machinery of India, also. It might happen. I agree. I agree that there is a Japanese company whose second hand plant and machinery might be better than Indian, India's first hand company, first hand machinery. It might be, but the government says that it does not matter. Second hand is second hand, whether in India or outside India. You are not supposed to buy second hand checkpoint number one. Clear? It means even imported second hand is not allowed. Even imported second hand will not be allowed. Second, any machinery or plant installed in any office, we are not giving you benefit to put machinery in office. Otherwise, what people you don't know, you will know? Come here, please listen to me. People will open a small manufacturing unit and they will say that I am a manufacturer. Okay? Try to understand the mentality of a sasis. I will open a small manufacturing unit with one machine and one worker. <laughs> How many machine? One machine, one worker. I will say I am manufacturer. And then I will buy computer in my office, AC in my office, computer for my employees, microwave in my guest house for the employees. Is this the intention why the government is giving you this benefit? Then why the government is giving you this extra 20% to manufacture, to use that in factory, right? Therefore, these assets are excluded from the list of additional depreciation. Le read carefully. Very important this is. Any machinery or plant installed in any office premise, not allowed. Residential accommodation, not allowed. Including accommodation in the nature of guest house, not allowed. Any office appliances, not allowed. Like computer, etc., not allowed. Any road transport vehicles, not allowed. You are buying a Mercedes for your MD. You are buying Mercedes for Mukesh Ambani and then saying that Reliance Industry will claim additional depreciation, not allowed. Are you clear? Not allowed. So, say this list very carefully. I am coming to the fourth one in a while. So, the first point says that second hand plant and machinery not allowed. Whether bought from India or outside India, the machinery has to be absolutely new. Second, Plant and machinery used in office premise, residential accommodation, guest house, not allowed. Office appliances, not allowed. Road transport vehicle, not allowed. Any machinery or plant, the whole of the actual cost of which is allowed. I am reading the fourth one. Read the fourth one. If any plant and machinery, the whole of the actual cost is allowed as deduction somewhere, then do not come here to claim additional depreciation. If you have already taken the benefit of that machinery in the form of deduction in some other section, then do not come over here. Let me give you an example. There is one section called as 35 AD, which will come later on. It is written that if you do production of fertilizer, what? If you produce fertilizer, then you will get 100% deduction of your assets. So, if I am engaged in production of fertilizer and if I am claiming 100% deduction of asset under that section, so then I cannot come over here and claim additional depreciation. Point number D, please read. You cannot have a dual benefit.
क्लियर now there is a doubt which can come into our mind suppose if i bought a new plant and machinery say of 100 lakhs i am a manufacturer obviously okay shall i go ahead and if i use that from say 15th of december 2022 so my first question to you all is what will be my normal depreciation say first What will be my normal depreciation? Not able to listen. 7.5 percent. Okay. Now, what will be the additional depreciation? Will the additional depreciation also become half? The answer is yes. So, this will become 10 percent in the current year if the asset is used for what? Tell me. Less than what? 180 days. This will also become half. Okay. So, now the question is. Half will come to how much? Half will come to 10 lakhs. Okay. So, what about the balance half? Balance half is how much? 10 lakhs. Don't worry, you will get in the next year. Previous year 23, 24. Okay. It will not be lapsed. So, if the asset is used for more than or equal to 180 days, then claim entire 20 percent. But if the asset is used for less than 180 days, then even additional depreciation will become half and balance additional depreciation you will be allowed in the subsequent year. Is it clear? This is written over here. You can check here. Please read. Bhavisha, kuch bol awaz nahi aarithi. The moral of the story, I am trying to say the balance will be allowed in the next year. It will not be lapsed. Do not worry about it. Okay. Shall I go ahead? Shall I go ahead? Okay. Please make sure that one thing, beta. You all are giving exams when? Except Julie. Julia, I know about you. Babisha, when is your exam? Number 23. Aniram? Kajal? So, I know that your exams are very far away, but just make sure that whatever we read every day, forget about textbook. Read from the summary book, color book. Please do that. Make that practice. Your very big subject will be done here. It's a very big subject. It's not a subject at the end of the syllabus. You will say, that ICI should make one group for DT, one separate group it is. You will realize that at the end of the subject. It is very, very, very big. So, be in touch with me. Be in touch with me because when we will be solving the questions at that time, you should be able to answer the things here. Because unless and until you revise the things, you will not be able to do. Try to make sure that, take an oath that you will complete this subject with the batch itself. Just make sure that, please. It will be done faster if you do now. It will take a lot of time if you, if you do start after 4 or 5 months, please. Anyways, pay attention on the board, please, all of you. Now, there was one co concern raised by a particular industry that whether we will get additional depreciation or not. Now, which is that industry who raised the concern? That is a printing industry. Which industry? Printing industry. A printing industry is using some machinery for printing purpose, right? So, they are asking whether our business is also covered in manufacturing or not. If yes, whether we will get additional depreciation or not. Okay. So, CBDD came up with a circular over here. Read this circular, please. And you let me know whether an assessee who is engaged in printing, whether he will or she will get the de de benefit of additional depreciation or not. And after that, I will explain you something about CBDD circular. I will explain you a few reasons of CBDD circular, what circular is all about, how the circular should be. How the circular should not be. Yeah. 
What do you feel? Will the associate engage in printing and publishing be eligible for additional depreciation? Have you read it properly? Shall I ask you a question then? Sure. Or will you want to read it once again? Then read once again. Nothing great question. Very straightforward. But if you have read it casually, then you will not understand. My question to you all is, I am engaged in printing of business, printing business. Will I get additional depreciation? Will I get? The answer is yes. My question is, I am engaged in printing and publishing both. I print also, I publish also. Will I get additional depreciation? My question is, I only publish. Will I get additional depreciation? Louder? The answer is no. The benefit is either for printing assessees or assessee who print also and publish also both. So, printing is common. Printing is mandatory. Along with that, you do publishing or you do not do publishing, that does not matter. If you do publishing, well and good. Even if you do not do publishing, then also it is good. Clear? Is it clear? Okay. Now, I will speak few things about CBDD circular. What is CBDD? What is circular? So on and so forth. Being a CA final student, you should know that, right? So, pay attention all of you, please. There is central government. In the central government, there is Ministry of Finance. And in the Ministry of Finance, there are a lot of different aspects like GST, like income tax, etc. Okay? Okay. Now, in income tax, there is CBDT. CBDT is the head of income tax. And the head of income tax has been given the power under section 119. To issue circulars. Okay. Now, why are circular issued? Circulars are issued to clarify a few things for clarification. And the circular's nature, try to understand the nature of circular. Always, whether it is an income tax or GST, it does not matter. This logic applies to both. Always remember, circular is not binding on assessees. It is binding on department and the circular should be beneficial to assessees. Okay, pay attention please. What do I mean by this? If a circular comes, okay, it should be for your benefits. It should not be harsh to the assessee. If a circular comes and it is beneficial for you, will you follow? If a circular comes and it is beneficial for you, will you follow? Obviously, I will follow because it is my, in my benefits. For example, if a circular comes for extending the due date of filing of return, will you follow? Obviously, I will follow. What is so wrong in that? I should not be, that is not harmful for me. I should not feel offensive about it, why the department is extending the date and that is for your goodness. But if a circular comes and it is harsh, it is against you, it is disallowing your expenses, it is taxing your incomes, then it is not binding on you, you may not follow that. It is not binding on SSE, but it is binding on the department. Why so? This has been so because CBDT is no one to make laws. Do you agree to this? Laws has to be made where? In the parliament, right? And CBDT does not sit in the parliament. If every power is given to CBDT, then the law is of no use. Every day CBDT will issue one circular and make changes. Right or not? So, if there is any circular... Have you ever seen that CBDT has issued a circular and reduced the date of filing and CBDT said that this time we will not file on 31st July, everybody will file on 15th July this time. 
Have they done so ever? They have always extended. Fortunately, this year they have not extended. Because they were very firm and adamant that we will not extend this time. We will not means not. And they have been notifying every SSC through emails and through WhatsApp and through uh, SMSs that we will not extend, not extend, not and they have not extended this time. This has happened, I think so, after 10 to 12 years that the date has not been extended. I do not remember when was the last time the CBDD has not extended date. Every year it was extension. I agreed that the last two years because of COVID it was extended. That is a, that is a different scenario. But before that also in 2019, 2018, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, I do not remember a single year where they have not extended. This is an exception for me. But have you ever seen that they have reduced the date? Chalo, this time everybody will file on 30th June. Nobody will file. It's a hard circular. I will not follow. If there is a hard circular coming against you, you can go and challenge in the court. If there is any circular that assessi, that department issues, that CBD issues and that is against assessi, assessi go to the high court and file a petition against that circular. Because circulars, if they are harsh, they are not binding on assessi. If they are beneficial, we will obviously follow that. There is nothing wrong in that. If somebody is saying that why the CBDT is extending the date, that is beneficial for you. Why are you shouting? What is so wrong in that? If you do not like extension, you file on time. Nobody is stopping you to file. Right or not? Right or not? Therefore, always remember that whenever circulars will come, it will be in your benefit. Always, whenever you will read circular, it will be for your benefit only. If you feel that it is not for my benefit, but it is against me, go and file a petition in the court. You can file a petition in the court and which people have done it. I will be speaking about that sometime later, whenever the respective topics will come. Okay. Now, coming to our color summary book, how to wrap up this particular thing in few lines. We need to understand that art. On page number 2.4, you can see over here, from year to year. We have wrapped up the entire edition depreciation in few lines. Shall I start? Rate 20 percent. 20 percent new plant and machinery. Acquired install use. Okay. Either manufacturer or power generation, distribution, transmission. Clear? Certain machinery is not allowed. Which machinery? Second hand machinery not allowed. Office prima is not allowed, residential accommodation, ship aircraft not allowed, road transport vehicle not allowed or any plant and machinery which is already allowed, 100% deduction not allowed. Clear? Please tell. Yes, this is also subject to 50%, balance 50% in the next year. If the asset is used for less than 180 days. Clear? Now, this is also like normal depreciation only. It will be reduced from the block to arrive at what? WDB for the next year. You want WDB for the next year, right? So, you will reduce this also from the block. This is just like a depreciation. This is one time benefit for that plant and machinery. One time benefit it is. And last but not least, printing or publishing, voila, circular. Clear? Now, let us go ahead with the next part. Now, here starts the real depreciation, please. I want your absolute attention now over here. Absolute attention. Dangerous and a beautiful discussion both at the same time. Listen carefully. I am coming to the first page of this chapter. You can pay attention on the board, please, all of you. Depreciation shall be allowed on the what? WDV of the block of asset, right? So, what is WDV? It is defined in section 43.6. So, we are now understanding the definition of WDV. We are trying to understand the definition of WDB as per the income tax law. Listen carefully. Your general definition will not work now. Your accounting definition will not work now. We need to understand the definition as per the law because it is defined in the income tax law. Where it is defined? Listen carefully. WDB is defined in section 43.6. Now, before I start with the definition of WDB, I want to explain you one principle. Every day, I will try to explain you some or the other principle to make your subject strong and to make you more knowledgeable in this subject. 
my objective is to teach you for exams also and also for your life for your practical life so somebody might ask me a question sir you said said on the first day the definitions are there on are there in section 2 right so i will say i did not say i asked you a question you all said and i agreed i did not say I asked you a question. What is section 2? You said definition. I said yes, agreed. And I move, moved ahead. Right? I did not counter question you all. So, right now I am asking myself a question. I am not asking you all. So, if we agreed that definitions are there in section 2, then why this WTB definition is there in 43.6? Right? So, let me tell you the definitions under any law. Any law, not only taxation law, are scattered at three places. Three places. First, section 2. The section 2 definition means this definition is applicable for the entire law. It means wherever the term will come, it will be applied in the same way in the entire law. Section 2 definitions are applicable for the entire subject. Example, India is defined in section 2, clause 25a, as I have shown you in the first lecture. Now, wherever India will come in the entire paper, in entire 298 sections, India will mean that only. Is it clear? There are certain definitions, second type, which are there in different sections, like 43.6, like 43.1. Those are chapter specific definitions. I have told you earlier, income tax law is defined, is divided into 23 chapters, right? So, this definition which I am talking about in 43.6, this is applicable to certain sections, not to the entire law. I do not know whether you got this point or not, beta. This definition of 43.6, the WDB definition is applicable to the chapter of PGBP, you can say. Not to the entire law, is it clear? So, this is applicable to certain series of sections, not to the entire law. And there are certain definitions which are applicable only to that section. And that is given in that section itself in the form of an explanation. What do I mean by this? Listen carefully. Do you know that in CA inter you might have done and even in office you might have done to, to compute remuneration to partners. You have to compute book profit, 90% of book profit, 60% of book profit, you, you might be doing in office, right? So, what is book profit? That is mentioned in an explanation to section 40B and there it is written that, listen carefully my words, for the purpose of this section, for the purpose of not series of section, for the purpose of not the act, but only for the purpose of this section, book profit means this, it means the definition of book profit is applicable only to that section that is 40b are you clear so as i am going ahead can i say i am narrow down narrow down i am narrow downing the definition of definitions firstly i told you the definitions which are applicable to the entire act right then i am telling you the definitions which are applicable to certain sections then i am telling you definition which is applicable only to that section did you understand Therefore, do not be under an impression that all definitions are there in what? Section 2. No, no, no. It is not like that. Definitely, Section 2 is the most important part of definitions and that is the biggest part of definition because there maximum definition comes, but not all. There are some definitions which are scattered here and there. I hope everyone is clear with this concept today, right? So, I have taught you two concepts today. One is circular ka concept. And one is definition ka concept. Yesterday I explained you notwithstanding concept. Right? Proviso concept. Are you clear? What is a proviso? What is notwithstanding? So, likewise, I will be explaining you lot of concepts relating to income tax law. And that was not only applicable to income tax law. That is applicable to all the laws that you are going to learn in your life. Anyways, WDV. Let us talk about WDV. Sir, so what is WDV? The loss is a very simple definition. WDV means what? Listen carefully. Actual cost 
of an asset minus depreciation actually allowed. This is the definition of WDB. Now, you need real brains huh, to understand this. Please, pay absolute attention, try to understand. We will be very patient enough to understand this concept. It is a very, very, very important concept for exam also and also for the further discussion of the chapter. So, please pay absolute attention. Shall I start? Sir, what is WDV? Nothing. Sir, we have learned in accounts, sir, what is so great in this? This is the only, this is the same thing which you have done it in accounts, right? Whatever is the cost of the asset minus whatever is the depreciation is your WDV, right? What is so great in this definition, sir? There is nothing great in this. There is a great word over here that is actually allowed. Sir, actually means what? Actually means that depreciation which saved your tax in the current year. Does depreciation save your tax under income tax law? Achha, what are you doing for depreciation in office? What do you do? Suppose there is a company whose PNL account is there in front of you. What will you do for that company to compute income tax law? When it comes to depreciation, what effect you will give? You will add back the depreciation of accounts, right? And you will reduce, you will add back the accounting depreciation. And you will reduce the th section 32 wala depreciation. So, the moment you reduce section 32 depreciation, can I say every rupee that is reduced under section 32 is saving your 30 percent tax? Is it saving or not? So, so, reduce from actual cost only that depreciation which is saving your tax. If a depreciation is not saving your tax, it cannot be called as actually allowed. And if it cannot be called as actually allowed, do not reduce from the block. You will understand this in a while. Takes Give some time to yourself. Give 10 minutes at least. You will understand it after I explain the entire concept. But for as of now, just try to understand one thing. That WDB is equal to a cost of an asset minus depreciation. I am putting more emphasis, absolute emphasis on actually allowed. Actually allowed. Whatever depreciation is actually allowed has to be reduced from the block of asset. So, actually means what? Actually means actually. Actually means jo really has been allowed to you to save your tax in the current year. Now, let me give you an example. Suppose there is an SSE, this is the PNL of SSE. By sales, 100 rupees. To expenses, 120 rupees. So, there is a loss. Okay. Now, the SSE has purchased some furniture of 100 lakhs. The rate of depreciation of furniture is 10 percent. Okay. So, with that logic, the SSE will get a depreciation of 10 lakh rupees over here. Right? Right or not? So, there will be a loss over here now. Loss of how much? 30 lakhs. Now, I do not know whether you know this or not. But in income tax law, you segregate this loss into two parts. You keep business loss separate and you keep unabsorbed depreciation separate. Do you know that? So, how much is the depreciation which is unabsorbed current in the current year? Unabsorbed means which is not which is not allowed in the current year, right? Depreciation which is unabsorbed is 10 lakhs and the loss which is unabsorbed it is 20 lakhs. Do you agree to this particular thing, beta? Now, listen carefully. There is some mistake in the law which the government has rectified by putting the word actually. And still there is some mistake in the law. Listen carefully now. Listen carefully. The real game starts here. Now, just now I have told you what is the definition of WDV. Please repeat once what is WDV? Actual cost minus depreciation actually allowed, right? Now, I want to compute the WDV of this asset. Actual cost minus depreciation actually allowed will become the WDV of the asset, beta. Actual cost is 100. Be very patient. Now, tell me how much depreciation is saving your tax in the current year? Is depreciation saving your tax in the current year or it will save in future years?
is depreciation saving your tax in the current year or it will save in the future years? How future year? Because in the current year, your sales are just 100 rupees and your expenses are sufficient to knock off your sales. So, there is no use of depreciation in the current year to knock off your sales. That is the reason the current year depreciation is unabsorbed, right? And it will be allowed in the subsequent years. So, are you taking any depreciation ka deduction in the current year? Are you are not taking that is the reason it is unabsorbed. Na? If you would have taken that it would have been absorbed. Please try to understand this. It is not easy. I understand this. Students take time at this point. I know that. That is the reason I am very slow at this moment. I am again asking you. My sales is 100. My revenue is 100. But my expenses are already 120. So, the depreciation will obviously not be used in the current year. Please tell me. Yaar. Therefore, if somebody will ask you, is depreciation saving your tax in the current year? What will you say? It is not saving. Therefore, can I say depreciation actually allowed will be nil only? Na? Because actually means that depreciation that saved your tax in the current year, right? Now, this depreciation is not saving tax in the current year because this is useless in the current year. It is of no use. It will be used in the subsequent years, maybe. With that, not my WDP will be 100 lakhs. Now, what will happen? This will lead to dual benefit to the assessee. What will happen? Next year's opening WDP will be again 100. So, next year you will claim 10% depreciation on 100. At the same time, you have carry forward unabsorbed depreciation of 10 rupees from last year. So, you will start to take dual benefit on that. I do not know whether you got this point or not. You have already claimed depreciation of 10 lakhs last year, which you are not able to absorb. So, you are carrying forward in the current year and in the current year, you are again claiming depreciation on 100. So, will it amount to dual benefit or not? So, the government made an amendment and said that unabsorbed depreciation, can I say? Can I say? Is deemed to be actually allowed. What? Please tell. Is deemed to be actually allowed. Now, after the amendment, they have put one explanation in the definition. Cost is 100 lakhs and deemed to be actually allowed is 10 lakhs. Therefore, your WDP will be 90 lakhs and in next year, you will claim depreciation on 90 lakhs and 10 lakhs you can carry forward and set off. Are, are you clear? You can see this example over here. It is there in your book. I have put this example over here. Don't worry. Okay. Come to page number 2.3, all of you. You can go through this. Yes, right, not 10, na? 90, 10 percent will come to 9 rupees, na? that will be on WDV now. If this is not done, then what will happen again, understand, you will claim depreciation on 110 percent again next year and that's 10 rupees will be carried forward and you will claim that separately. So, overall it will be benefit of 110 rupees on a 100 rupees asset. And did you understand what I said? Please tell. Clear? Okay. So, the government did what? They created an exception that, okay, this is not actually allowed. Then we will put the word deemed to be allowed. If it is not actually allowed, then deemed to be actually allowed. Okay. Shall I go ahead? Now, the second exception. Listen carefully. It is a very beautiful exception now. Very important also for exams. There was an assessee who was engaged in Growing and manufacturing tea in India. Okay. 
So, what is the activity of the SSC? SSC is engaged in growing tea and then manufacturing. It means SSC has its own tea farms, okay? Where the tea is grown and then the SSC plug in the leaves, put it in the factory, milk tea. Now, the SSC's PGBP is as follows. Listen carefully. PGBP before depreciation. Or I would rather write proper words. The composite income of the SSE. Composite means growing plus manufacturing is 3000 lakhs. Okay. From that, SSE is claiming some depreciation of say 15 percent on actual cost of assets worth 1000 lakhs. So, SSC is claiming 150 lakhs depreciation on that. Okay. This will come to 2850 lakhs. Now, you might have done in CA in inter, if you remember, that if an SSC is engaged in growing and manufacturing tea both in India, okay, then only 40 percent is taxable. Do you remember that? And 60 percent is exempt, agricultural. Remember that, beta? Do you remember that, Bhavisha? From your face, I cannot recognize that. So, 40 percent, kitna aata hai? Ek bar koi ek jan kar lo. 2850, 40 percent. 1140. Okay, beta. And this one? 1710. Okay. Now, this is exempt and this is what? Taxable. There was certain specific percentages given for three things. Tea, coffee and rubber, if you remember. Right? Even in CA final, it is there. Do not worry. I will be teaching that later on. Do not worry if you, even if you do not remember it. It is okay. Now, listen carefully. So, how much tax the SSE will pay? SSE will pay tax on this amount, right? Correct. This is exempt. Forget about this. This is gone. This is not subject to tax. Now, when it comes to computation of WDV, again I will ask you, what is WDV? Actual cost minus depreciation actually allowed. Depreciation actually allowed means which has saved your tax in the current year, right? Now, what the SSE is saying, listen. SSE is saying actual cost is 1000 lakhs of that asset, right? Less depreciation actually allowed. SSC is saying what? I will reduce from here. How much depreciation SSC has claimed? 150 lakhs. Listen carefully now. 150 lakhs. Now, what is the argument of SSC? Listen carefully. This is the level at which you have to think being an SSC. If you are a tax planner or if you are a tax head of a company, your duty and job is to save tax for the company in some or the other way. One day it should happen that because of you there is some amendment which has come. That day I will feel proud of you. That because of my student this amendment has come because my student has found out a loophole in the law. That is what you are learning for. What the SSC is saying you know? That I know that I have claimed 150 but 150 is not used to save my tax. Because this 150 got eventually broke up into two parts 40 and 60. So, my actually allowed depreciation out of this is only 60 lakhs. That is 40% of 150. I do not know whether you got this point or not. If you have missed last 4 seconds, then the point is gone. What I said in the last 4 seconds, I am again repeating. What does Asasi is saying? Asasi is saying I am claiming 150 lakhs. Agreed. But out of my total income, only 40% is taxable. Not entire 100% is taxable. Therefore, only 40% of depreciation has saved my tax, not entire 100%, remaining 60% is anyways exempt. So, depreciation actually allowed will be 40% of 150 and I will only reduce 60 lakhs, I will not reduce 150 and I will make 940 lakhs as my WDV. Why the SSC is doing so? Why the SSC is reluctant to remove 150? Because if we remove 150, then the WDV will, will come to a lower side and the next year depreciation will be lower. Are you able to understand that? 
please tell me. So, the assessor is saying that this 150 lakhs, assessor is saying I agreed 150 lakhs I am getting. But anyways, only my 40% income is taxable. Therefore, my actual saving of tax will be only 40% of 150 lakhs. Therefore, actually allowed means that depreciation which has saved your tax. So, depreciation which is get saving my tax is only 40% of 150, that is 60 lakhs. So, I will reduce only 60 lakhs from here. So, that my WDV remains higher side. And next year's WDV will remain how much? At 940 opening WDB, are you clear? Department did not like this and department made an amendment under the income tax law by putting another explanation. Let me show you where. Come to page number 2.11. And the department has put a specific explanation, explanation 6. Explanation 7, sorry. Page number 2.11. Can I read this? For the purpose of computing WDV of the asset acquired before the previous year, the total amount of depreciation shall be computed. Computed what? Can you read this? As if the entire composite income of assets is chargeable under the head PGBP. Assume that entire income is PGBP only. Forget about agricultural income. Assume entire income is what? PGBP. And then depreciation so computed shall be deemed to have been actually allowed to the SSE. Check over here. So, compute depreciation as if there is no composite income. Assume that entire 3000 lakhs is PGBP only. Assume that entire 1000 lakh asset is used for PGBP and then compute depreciation and then reduce it from the block. So, what will happen after the amendment? After the amendment, this was before the amendment. And after the amendment, 1000 lakh minus 150 lakh, you have to reduce from the block of asset. So, that next year's WDB is on a lower side. Are you clear? Are you clear? The same thing is mentioned obviously here also in the color book. As a second exception, you can see over here. Till here. Page number 2.4. Clear? Now, there is one more thing which we need to understand over here. Today morning I told you that, today morning I told you that goodwill is not a what? Depreciable asset anymore, right? Today I told you, but from which year? Previous year 2021, right? Right, beta? So, from this year, if you purchase any goodwill, the value of that will be nil. You will not get any depreciation on goodwill, okay? This amendment was made last year. Last year, they made this amendment. Now, listen carefully one thing, very carefully. Shall I speak? Shall I speak? Listen carefully. What if I purchased a goodwill in previous year 1516? I have purchased goodwill in previous year 1516. 
So, at that time, was the Asasi getting the benefit of depreciation? Yes, Asasi was getting depreciation of 15 percent. Beta Asasi would have claimed 15 percent in 1516. Sorry, 25 percent, not 15 percent. Intangible assets are depreciated at 25 percent, right? 1516, he would have claimed 15, 25 percent. Please answer. 16-17, Asasi would have claimed 25 percent of the WDV. 17-18, 25 percent of WDV. 18-19, 25 percent of WDV. And 19-20 is the last year on which the Asasi would have claimed of WDV. Now, on 31st March 2020, there would have been some balance in WDV, which will obviously come on 1-4-2020. Right. So, now what the government says that even the old balance has to be removed from the current block. We do not want to give depreciation on old goodwill also. If you purchase a goodwill in 2021 or henceforth, you will not get depreciation. That is something which is clear. But even if you have purchased in 15-16, there is a possibility there is some balance left in the WDV of the goodwill. Yes or no? So, you have to identify that balance, that how much is that balance and that you have to remove from the block on 1 for 2020. So, that suppose you purchase this for 100 lakhs, okay and there is 30 lakhs balance over here. So, that much balance has to be removed from 1 for 2020, did you understand? So, that on this amount also you do not get depreciation from second next year onwards, did you understand what I said? Forget about the new purchase, even the old purchases are not allowed from 2021. I hope it is clear to all of you, is it? Now, let me explain you the implication of this with an example, shall we? So, there is one example which we have put in our textbook. This is our example in our question bank. Question number 32 on page number 6.32 of question bank. Shall I start? Shall I start? Even if you are not able to find your question mark, it's okay. You can see from the board. You can find later on. It's okay. X Limited commences business of manufacturing on April 11, 2016 by acquiring goodwill of a business for 20 lakhs. So, they have purchased goodwill of 20 lakhs. At that time, depreciation would have been allowable, right? On the same day, it purchases few patents of 30 lakhs. So, they have purchased two things. One is goodwill, one is patent. Both are intangible assets, same block. Both are same block. Yes, after 11th April 2016, the company acquires and transfers the following. In 2017, one patent is sold, that is transferred, okay? So, we will reduce the, that from the block, okay. Then in 2018, another goodwill was acquired and a new patent was purchased, okay. And in 2019, on the next page, you can see another goodwill was acquired and one patent was sold. So, we will go year by year, year by year we will go, okay. We will talk about the first year. First year is which year? 1617. Please tell. So, what has happened in 1617? Opening balance is nil, okay. And you purchase two assets, one goodwill, one patent, total 50 lakhs. Do you agree to this? And both of them are purchased on which date? In April 2016, therefore, you will claim full 25 percent depreciation on that. Clear? So, your WDB at the end of the first year will be 37,50,000. Okay. Now, what has happened in 2017? You have not done anything great. You have just transferred one of the patent of 24 lakhs, right? So, you less that 24 lakhs from the next year. So, 3750 minus 24 will come to 1350, okay? So, next year you have not done anything else. So, claim depreciation of 25 percent on that. Next year after that, in 2018, your opening WDB will be 10 lakh 12,500, okay? 
Now, what you have done in 2018? In 2018, we have purchased two assets, one patent and one goodwill of 2 lakh and 3 lakhs. So, add 5 lakhs. So, your WDB now becomes 15 lakh 12,500. Claim 25% on depreciation on that and your answer will be 1134,375. Don't get into calculations. Calculations are correct. Is it clear till here? Next year, that is last year, 1920, I have purchased one goodwill and I have sold one patent. Correct? So, I am adding goodwill, reducing patent that will come to 1259,375. I will claim depreciation and then I will get WDV as on 1-4-2020, right? Now, please tell me, does this include goodwill and patent both? Barabar? Now, from next year onwards, that is 2021 onwards, I will not get depreciation on goodwill, right? So, I have to remove goodwill ka value out of this. So, how will I get goodwill ka value out of this? I have to compute goodwill separately now. So, that I will get goodwill ka WDV. So, that once I get goodwill ka WDV separately, I will reduce from the total WDV so that I will get only patent ka WDV. Did you understand? So, now we will compute from 16 to 20 only goodwill. So, in first year, I have purchased a goodwill of 20 lakhs and patent of 30. But I am not taking patent now. I want only goodwill. So, I will claim 25% depreciation on that. Okay. Okay. Next year, it will be 15 lakhs. Very good, Kajal. So, answer is the same. Next, there is no purchase. 15 lakhs is your WDB, 25% depreciation, 11 lakh 25,000. I am just doing goodwill card calculation separately. I am ignoring patent. There is nothing new in this. After I do all these things, I will get the goodwill card WDB as 857. What was the total WDB beta? 944. Therefore, the differential amount will be what? The opening WDB for the next year. Did you understand? So, out of the total WDV of patent and goodwill, I will remove goodwill because goodwill is not allowed from 2021. I hope everyone is clear. Is it? Shall we go ahead? Okay. Now, pay attention please. Let us go ahead with the next discussion. Pay attention all of you. The next discussion starts from the current discussion. And that is the definition of WDV. Pay attention please all of you. What is WDV? WDV is the actual cost of an asset minus the depreciation actually allowed. So, now the question will arise what is actual cost of the asset? What is actual cost? What do you mean by the term actual cost? So, we are now trying to understand what do you mean by the term actual cost. Listen carefully. The term actual cost is defined in section 43.1. Again, if a definition is not there in section 2, but in some other section, then its application is reduced, right? It will not be applicable to the entire act, but it will be applicable to certain series of sections now. Now, listen carefully one by one. Most important discussion for the day is the definition of actual cost. Now, please try to understand whether you follow... SLM or whether you follow WDV, in the first year everything is same only. Na? In the first year, the question of SLM or WDV does not arise. In the first year, everything is SLM only, right? Everything has to be on cost. From second year onwards, there will be difference. From second year onwards, in SLM, you compute depreciation on cost. In WDV, you compute depreciation on WDV, written down value. But in first year, it does not matter. So, my question is, my issue is, what is actual cost? What is the definition of actual cost? The definition of actual cost is given here, I am telling you. I am not writing, I am telling you. Shall I speak? So, listen, the definition of actual cost. Listen carefully, I am speaking. Actual cost of asset means, listen carefully, beta. Actual cost of an asset means an actual cost. Now, what kind of this definition is this, sir? If I will ask Kajal, what is the meaning of your name, Kajal? Then Kajal will say, Kajal means Kajal. Is this the way to explain anything, sir? If I say, if I ask Bhavisha, what is the meaning of your name, Bhavisha? She will say, Bhavisha means Bhavisha. 
Now, what kind of meaning is this? But the definition of income tax law is like this only. Let me explain completely, then you will understand why is it so. There is nothing wrong in this, I am telling you. The government says that actual cost of an asset, I do not have any asset to show over here except my phone. Otherwise, I would have shown some asset and explained you, but forget it. Actual cost means an actual cost of an asset to the SSE as reduced by that portion which is met by any person or any authority. So, actual cost means actual cost as reduced by something which is met by someone. Met by someone means somebody has given you some subsidy etc. for to buy that asset. Okay. So, we reduce that much from the asset. I will be saying this definition at least 5-6 times. Actual cost means actual cost only of the asset to the SSE. Actual cost does not mean anything else. Actual cost means actual cost to the SSE as reduced by that portion which is made by any person or authority. If something is made by any, any person, say some government etc. has given you some subsidy, grant etc. Then you can reduce that much from the cost of asset. Because that much you have not incurred from your pocket. Then you cannot claim depreciation on that amount. Suppose if I am buying an asset of 100 crores and government is giving me subsidy of 20 crores. Then why? How? How can I claim depreciation on 100 crores? 20 crore I have got, I got finance from somebody else. So, that 20 crore has to be removed from the asset. Remaining 80 crore will be subject to what? Depreciation. This is something which is very simple. Coming to the first part, what is this vague and unique definition and ajeeb definition of actual cost means actual cost. Now, government could have said like this also. Listen carefully. That actual cost means the price of the asset. But the government has not the, used the word what? Price. The government is using the word what? Actual cost means actual cost of the asset. Are you able to understand? The government is using the word actual cost means actual cost of the asset. They are not using the word price of the asset. Why? Because the word actual cost is very wider as compared to the word price. If somebody asks me, Sir, the TV which is installed in your office, what is the price of this TV? I will say the price of this TV is say 50,000 rupees. Sir, how 50,000? I bought it from Amazon. I, I, it was 50,000 for me. You can also check on Amazon. It is 50,000. Example. Now, if somebody will ask me what is the cost of this TV? Then I will say wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. Cost of this TV, na? Wait. 50,000 I had to pay to Amazon to bring TV to my home. Then I have to pay 2000 rupees to install that TV. I have to put bracket behind that, behind the TV to put that TV on a bracket. 2000 rupees I have paid for that. Then I have to put uh, 3000 rupees I have to pay to my electrician to put wiring and all, to put a proper board over here, put an earthing. Okay, is there any other cost? No, that's it. So, if somebody will ask you what is the price of the asset, you will say the price of the asset is 50,000. But somebody will ask you what is the cost of that asset. The word cost is very wider as compared to the word price. The word cost would include all those expenses which are necessary to put the asset into working condition. That is the cost of the asset. Therefore, the law says that actual cost means actual cost of the asset to the SSE as reduced by that portion which is met by any person or authority. So, cost means cost, cost means actual cost, actual cost to the assessee means whatever expenses you would require to put that asset into working condition is your actual cost. Like in factory, before you start the factory or before you start the machinery, will you test run that machinery or you will directly manufacture? You will test run that machinery, right? So, whatever cost is incurred in test running that machinery, that is also a part of the actual cost of the machinery. Are you able to understand? Whatever money you have paid to the laborers to bring that machinery till the factory by holding on their shoulders, that money is also actual cost to the machi machinery because that is also a part of the machinery. That is also required for the machinery to be putting into working condition. Therefore, the word, the law used the word cost and not the price. Are you able to understand? The word price is very narrowed down. Even in accounts, you do the same thing, I think so. Whatever expense is necessary to put the asset into working condition is a part of what? Is a part of asset. Are you clear? So, let us now, first of all, read this definition from our book, page number 2.12. 2 
एक्चुअल कॉस्ट मीन्स वॉट द एक्चुअल कॉस्ट ऑफ दस टू दी एस एस सी एक्चुअल कॉस्ट मीन्स वॉट एक्चुअल कॉस्ट मीन्स एक्चुअल कॉस्ट इट डज नॉट मीन प्राइस ऑफ दसेट क्लियर इट मीन्स द कॉस्ट ऑफ दसेट टू दस एस सी reduced by that portion of the cost which has been directly or indirectly met by any person or authority like subsidy etc you can say subsidy etc will come over here okay okay now there is one amendment which is made few years back over here which i am saying right now only listen carefully right now only i am saying pay attention please on the board towards me as of now it's a very important amendment which was made around 2 3 years back in 2019 that if i buy any asset i am buying this phone theek okay? hai and if i have to buy this phone i have to make the payment online if i make cash payment which payment then that will not form part of the actual cost if somebody does something does not form part of the actual cost can i say then depreciation will not be allowed on that asset so now the government is saying you that buy assets also online likewise you might have done in ca inter that if you make any payment for any expenditure in excess of 10000 rupees then you don't have to make in cash you have to make online right do you remember that 483 i don't know whether you remember the section or not but provision everybody everyone might be knowing it the same way even asset cannot be bought in cash if you buy an asset in cash then that asset will not form part of the actual cost that expenditure will be ignored for the purpose of actual cost so let us read that particular paragraph here however when an assessor incurs any expenditure for acquisition of any asset very important point or part thereof in respect of which a payment or aggregate of payment made to a person in a day otherwise then by underline otherwise then by an account pay check or account pay draft or use of use of electronic clearing system that is ecs or such other electronic mode as may be prescribed exceeds 10000 rupees the four things which i have highlighted first is account pay check account pay draft electronic clearing system and such other electronic mode as may be prescribed these are allowed or these are not allowed these are allowed these are allowed modes right beta ha if you buy an asset of 6000 rupees 7000 rupees then it is fine the payment should exceed how much 10000 then this provision is applicable then such expenditure shall not form part of the actual cost it will not form part of the actual cost let me tell you very clearly do not put in the actual cost ignore that now which are the four modes can you please repeat for me beta first it's an account pay check not bearer check bearer check not allowed which check not allowed i will be speaking in great detail later on don't worry about it in 40a3 right now i am not speaking i'll be speaking in 43a3 the types of checks which are allowed i'll again come back to this provision at that time also don't worry second what is second account pay bank draft third ecs is allowed fourth any other electronic mode which are prescribed by the government barabar yesterday i have told you what do you mean by prescribe there is a rule for that and the government has made a rule over here see and they have mentioned lot of modes over here in the prescribe mode these things will also be allowed most of the things you are aware of like what all things are allowed credit card allowed okay debit card allowed net banking allowed imps allowed upi allowed rtgs allowed neft allowed and bheem allowed aadhar pay allowed okay these are all modern modes of payments right all of them are allowed to the ssc under the income tax law don't worry about it okay therefore in all there are how many modes can you just count it for me total which are allowed first is account pay check second is account pay draft third is ecs 
And in fourth, there are a lot of payments like debit card, credit card, net banking, IMPS, UPI, RTGS, Beam UPI, around 10 to 11 modes are there into, in, a, in, in totality, right? Now, I would like you all to again read this paragraph. Then I will explain you the implication of this with examples. Yes, beta. Number, no, 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 no. Tere background, tere background kaise tere baal ja rahe, Bhavisha. Tu ladka ban gai, dekh. Is that option there in Zoom? Is that option there in Zoom to blur the background? Now, let us see this example, beta. Illustration 1. Asasi purchases the plant and machinery of 4 lakh on 1-1-2003-23 and pays rupees 4 lakh by cash. Bhool jau. No depreciation. Do you agree? And there is one more implication over here. I am keeping that on hold. We will see that in 269 ST. I don't know whether you know this or not. I cannot purchase in cash. The same way you do, you know that you cannot accept 2 lakh or more in cash. Are you aware of that? There is a there is a provision in law. The buyer cannot purchase in cash. Similarly, the seller also cannot sell in cash if he is selling any goods or services of 2 lakhs or more. You have to report that in tax audit report in 269 ST. We will talk later. Don't worry. I have given a cross implication over here. Okay. So, forget about the 269 ST implication. I have written also. See later in the chapter of TDS. Okay. Next example. Let us see. Suppose in illustration 1, listen carefully, he has bought one asset of 4 lakh, right, directly in cash. So, the value will be 0. Please answer. Now, suppose he does not buy in one shot, but he gives an installment, the payment. And some are in cash, some are in check, okay. Then what will happen? Let us see. Do not see the last call. Just see the first three column. Suppose first he paid cash of 5000 rupees each 10 times of 50,000 rupees on 1 1 2023. Will this 50,000 form part of the actual cost or it will not form part of the actual cost? Please say. It will form part or it will not form part? It will not form part beta because in the entire day it is exceeding 50,000. Please check the provision above. In the entire day it should not exceed 10,000. Check. Is it exceeding 10,000 in the entire day? You cannot break the payment in 10 times. Uh, you one payment on 11 am, one payment on 12 pm, one payment on 1 pm. 1 payment on 2 pm, 1 payment on 3 pm, 4 pm, 5 pm, 6 pm, 7 pm, 8 pm, 9 pm, 10 pm on the same day. You cannot do that, na? The government will aggregate all of them. Check in the provision, it is written very clearly. Aggregate payment in a day should not exceed 10,000 rupees. Is it exceeding 10,000 rupees? Then you have to make the payment by the four modes. Will this 50,000 be forming part of the cost or not? It will not form part of the cost. Now, this listen carefully. Shall I beta? Ab galti mat karna. Don't make mistake now. From 2nd Jan to 16 Jan every day. That is how many days? 15 days. Every day he is making 10,000 rupees exact payment. 
इन कैश विल दिस बी कवर्ड और विल दिस नॉट बी अलाउड विल दिस बी अलाउड नाउ द आंसर इज येस वाई इट विल बी अलाउड बिकॉज एवरी डे इट इज नॉट एक्सीडिंग टेन थाउजेंड इट इज एक्सैक्ट टेन थाउजेंड द अमाउंट शुड एक्सीड टेन थाउजेंड राइट देर फॉर दिस विल बी अलाउड एंड द थर्ड वन विल बी ऑब्वियसली अलाउड करेक्ट देर फॉर द टोटल कॉस्ट ऑफ द असेट विच विल बी अलाउड एज डेप्रीसिएशन विल बी थ्री लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड डू यू अग्री and 50000 which you paid here will not be allowed what he should have done he should have made this payment also in five different days correct if he would have made payment of 10 10 10 10 10 in five different days he would have, he would have been allowed on that 50000 also bit a clear okay perfect coming to the discussion which i have started that is the definition of actual cost okay it's a big discussion today's entire lecture will go in this only okay what is actual cost till 1 o'clock till 1 o'clock we are only interested in actual cost today what is actual cost please you guys speak once so that i get a confirmation and then i'll go ahead what is actual cost actual cost means <coughs> this is the most simplest definition that a student can answer <coughs> actual cost means beta actual cost of asset to the assessee is it is it wider than the term price much wider okay now let us take up some issues now pay attention on the board there was one assessee by the name called as challapalli sugar mills limited commonly known as csm we address that as csm i will write the complete name also challapalli sugar mills limited listen carefully shall i start the discussion which i am going to do for the next half an hour can be summed up in 5 seconds it is not a discussion of more than 5 seconds i can speak right now and just go ahead you will not realize also what i have missed but that is something which i will not do you will not realize what you have missed but i realize that what i am not saying that is something which i will not do i will do justice with the subject but telling you the reasoning behind each and everything in a proper manner so what has happened in this case long back say in 1995 just an example the assessee took a loan 10% loan of 1000 lakhs okay with that loan the assessee started his own factory to start its business so he start constructing the factory installing plant and machinery so on and so forth okay and in 1998 1999 the business got what commenced okay so this period will be called as prior period okay now in 95 96 96 97 97 98 assc has paid a lot of interest to the bank right say simple interest also if i calculate every year 100 lakhs would have been paid as interest correct so in 3 year assc would have paid 300 lakhs as interest do you agree please say so the question in front of the department and in front of the assc was what will happen with this interest what will happen with this interest okay so the first opinion which the assc gave this is a prior period interest right the first opinion which the assessee gave was allow me that 300 lakhs in previous year 98 99 the department said no it will not be allowed as deduction in previous year 98 99 i asked why i have incurred whatever interest i have incurred in the earlier 3 years allow me in the current year because my business is coming the government says no the government says have you read ever section 28 that is the charging section i said yes so what is written over there what is written over there is profits and gains from business and profession carried on by the assc at any time during the previous year whatever is the profit and gain of the current year that is current previous year shall be considered in the current year prior period items are not considered prior period items are not considered 
therefore under income tax law prior period items are not allowed as deduction and if you henceforth analyze a tax audit report you can see over there there is one of the clause in tax audit report where you have to report that as a chartered accountant is there any prior period expense have you seen that in the tax audit report why is it so why is it there because it is not allowed under income tax law. Prior period expenses are not allowed in the current year. So, Asasi is asking what to do with this interest then? What will happen with this interest? Listen carefully. What will happen with this interest? Asasi asked a very genuine question, right? The department said that we do not know what to do with, it, with this interest. But this interest will not be allowed as deduction in the current year 1999. Assessi went to Supreme Court and the Supreme Court gave a beautiful principle. Listen carefully. Supreme Court said that there is a difference between prior to commencement of business and post commencement of business. What is the difference? Such a beautiful difference created by Supreme Court in the case of Challapalli Sugar Mills Limited. Supreme Court said that till the time the business is not ready, till the time the business is not ready, a businessman put his soul, put his heart, put his efforts. Everything which he do till the time the business is not ready is to make the business ready is, is, is something which he put his effort for the purpose of putting the assets into a ready condition. Is it correct or not? Till the time the business is not ready, you are not interested in customers. You will be interested in customer after the business is ready, right? So, till the time the business is not ready, you are putting your heart, you are putting your soul, you are putting your sweat, you are putting your, all your efforts in keeping the asset into a ready condition. Yes or no? And once the business is ready, now you are working for customers. There is a clear difference between pre-commencement and post-commencement. During pre-commencement, you work for assets. Work for what? And post-commencement, you work for revenue. Till the time the business is not ready, you do not think about revenue at that time. You think about starting of a business. You think about installing a factory, plant and machinery, furniture in the factory. And once the business is ready, you think about what? Please tell me your customers, your revenue, your PNL account. So it means till the time the Supreme Court held that. Therefore, till the time the business is not ready, you are working for what? Assets, right? So this loan is also for assets. Therefore, this interest should also be what? Please tell me. Please tell me. Capitalize and you can claim depreciation on that interest. Till the time the business is what? Not ready. Are you clear? Now, this principle was given by Challapalli Sugar Mills Limited in 1985. At that time, at that time, everybody's mind was blown up that what a concept the Supreme Court has given. And after that, the principle was borrowed from this concept. And then ICI brought the concept of borrowing cost. Earlier, borrowing cost accounting standard was not there. Accounting standard on borrowing cost came in 2002. So, even ICI has borrowed this concept from this Supreme Court judgment of income tax. Do you know that before every accounting standard is made, you need to make a guidance note first of all. First, a guidance note is made and then accounting standard is mandate. So, in the guidance note of borrowing cost, it is written that the concept of borrowing cost was borrowed from the concept of Supreme Court judgment of Challapalli Sugar Mills Limited. Let us come to the book and read one by one, step by step. 1995, you took a loan. 1998, you commence business. What will happen with this first interest? Let us read this first interest. Page number 2.14. As per the Supreme Court judgment of Challapalli Sugar Mills Limited, interest on borrowed co capital till the commencement of business has to be capitalized to the cost of asset and then depreciation can be claimed accordingly on it by the SSE. This cannot be allowed as revenue expense in the year of commencement as it amounts to prior period expense. Yes or no? You cannot claim that as revenue expenditure. You have to claim that as a prior expense. And therefore, it will not be allowed as a direct expense. You have to capitalize to the cost of asset. Therefore, the, by applying the principle of Challapalli Sugar Mills Limited, we conclude that till the time the business is not ready, the expenses are not incurred for earning revenues, but incurred for fixed assets. Therefore, the term actual cost is wide enough to include all those expenses which are inextricably linked with the asset. Inextricably means... Yes, the, on, in the first lecture, I have told you, inextricably means closely related to business, add back.
Okay. Now going ahead with the discussion. Business is commenced, beta. Now tell me what will happen with interest. Can I claim that as a deduction in PGBP? Now can I claim the interest as a deduction under PGBP? Are business is commenced, factory started, machineries are used. Now loan will continue, na? loan is not over. Are loan will continue for years and years, loan is not over now. Now what will happen with the, this interest? Claim as a revenue expense, right? Now, where is interest allowed under PGBP? All the deductions are there in 30 to 37, right? It is there within these sections only, na? So, where is interest allowed? Under 36, 1, 3. Where it is allowed? 1, sub clause 3, okay? Come here and read the interest 2. Interest 2 is which interest? Listen carefully. See on the board? After commencement, after commencement interest is interest too, okay. In this case, since the business is commenced, then the assets are used and therefore interest expense will be allowed as revenue expenditure as per section 3613, clear. Now listen carefully. Can it happen that after few months, that is on 1st of Jan 1999, I took a second loan? Can it happen? And with that second loan, what I did, I bought a new asset and which was put to use on 31st of March 1999. I bought a new asset, but it was used from here. In between, it was not used. Okay. So, Abhi, you only tell as per your logic. What will I do with the interest of these three months? Capitalize it. Are you clear? Because again the asset is not used, till the time the asset is not used, you have to capitalize that. I will just tell you where is the citation. It is written in proviso to section 3613. You may or may not remember, it is okay. I am just telling you the reference. So, you will capitalize because again the asset is not put to use, right? Please tell. And once the asset is put to use, after that, that is after 31st March 1999, what will happen? Please tell. Revenue expense, right? And can I say now? Now it shall not form part of cost. After March, it shall not form part of cost, right? Right or not? Now, what Assasi used to say, you know, Assasi has a brilliant mind. Huh? After March, after March, obviously the asset is put to use. Please tell me. So, once the asset is put to use, you can claim as a revenue expenditure. What does SSE used to do? SSE used to claim dual benefit. First, SSE used to say, because the asset is put to use now, I can claim as a revenue expenditure. And at the same time, the SSE used to say, this loan is not over. The loan has a relationship with asset till the time the loan is not completed. Do you agree to this sentence? Suppose if I buy this phone on a loan, okay, I buy this phone on a loan of 24 months EMI. Example, then the asset, I have you, I am using this asset, right? Please tell me the relationship of loan or with this phone will be for how much time? Till the loan is over, right? Till the time the loan is over, the relationship of the asset has to be there with the loan, na? Are you clear? So, what does Sasi used to say? Out of the way thinking. After 31st March 2019, Assasi used to say, whatever interest I will pay on the asset now, on the asset, asset only he is paying now, he will get the deduction under 3613. Obvious, this is correct, allowed. Now, Assasi used to make a second argument by saying that my loan is not over and the loan is related to what? Please tell me, asset. So, whatever interest I am paying, you have to capitalize to th that to the asset. Till the time the loan is not over, the loan is related to the asset, right? And actual cost means actual cost. All the expenditure which are necessary to put the asset into working condition has to be part of the cost of asset. So, the asset is saying that this interest should also be forming part of the cost. This will lead to dual benefit or not? 
on one time you are taking a direct deduction of under PGBP, on other hand you are adding to the asset and again claiming depreciation. So, the government made some amendment. What amendment? Pay attention over here. They put one explanation over here. You can see from the board directly. Asset acquired out of borrowed fund. Can you see this? Interest on loan relating to the period after the asset is first put to use shall never form part of actual cost. The government had to say this specifically. Once the asset is put to use, the asset, the interest should never form part of what actual cost. Is it clear to everyone? Please tell me. Now, I would like to just sum up this entire discussion in 5 seconds. What is this discussion? The discussion is very simple. If the asset is not what put to use, then interest has to be capitalized. And once it is put to use, then interest has to be claim as revenue expenditure. That's it. This entire discussion is this only. Is it clear to everyone? So, shall I ask you one last question and complete this discussion here? Please, please allow me. Shall I ask you, will you answer? This example only. <coughs> this example. I commenced, I took loan in 95. I commenced business on 1st October 1998. Okay. You have to tell me the following things. What will happen of, with the interest of 95 96? Capitalize. What will happen with the interest of 96 97? Capitalize and claim depreciation, right? Capitalize. What will happen with the interest of 97 98? Nine, 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 nine. See the dates properly, Kajal Bita. Calendar may problem with Irgubat. 97, 98 is last year, not current year. Fully capitalized, right? It starts from first step. Correct or not? Don't tell me to explain this now. Shall I go ahead? What will I do with the interest of 90 and 99? Kajal is saying up to September capitalize and after that, why capitalize up to September? The business is started in previous year 1999. I can say this interest is of current year. I can say this is this this interest is of current year. I can say this interest is pertaining to previous year 1999. Is this interest pertaining to previous year 1999? Do you agree to that? Is the business commence in previous year 1999? Now, for that, we need to understand what is the definition of previous year. From when previous year starts and when it ends. So, for that, I am explaining you the definition of previous year now. I have not taught you previous year. I have taught you total income in the last lecture. I have taught you person in the last year lecture. Do you remember that? From the charging section. Charging section mein kya kya likha tha? Total income of a person shall be chargeable to tax. Of the previous year in the following AY. Do you remember that? So, what is previous year? The term previous year, listen carefully, is defined in section 2, clause 34. Okay. So, when I read this definition, what is written? I will show you the definition. Just wait. Listen to me first. Can I say the term previous year means as defined in section 3. So, when I open section 2 clause 34, what is written over there? The term previous year means as defined in section 3. So, they are throwing me towards section 3. They are saying that go and see section 3. I will explain you that also why they have done so. So, let us go to section 3 and see. Shall we? It is written on the next page. Discussion on previous year. The term previous year is defined under section 234 as defined under section 3. Now, why they have not directly defined? Why they have given a reference of section 3? Yes or no, that doubt might come in the student's mind. For that, you need to understand in section 2, how are definitions laid down? How are they laid down? From section 2.1 to last section 
How are they laid down? Do you remember? In what order they are laid down? Anybody? Nobody knows. There are so many laws you have learned so far in life since CA foundation. CA inter now CA final also I, I am sure you might have learned some or the other law so far. Don't know how the definitions are laid down beta? It is laid down always in alphabetical order. In what order? Always in alphabetical order. First definition, second definition, third definition. Why so? Why? Please tell me why it is in alphabetical order. So that if you want to find a particular term ka definition, it should be easy for you to find out. Na? Suppose if you want to find the definition of profession, you will directly go to P, right? Yes or no? So, in income tax, the definition starts with A. Agriculture income definition starts with A and ends with Z with section 248 is the last definition which defines zero coupon bond. What? Zero coupon bond. A to Z. Is it clear? So, what will come first in the definition business or profession? That is the reason yesterday, if you remember, business is defined in 213 and profession is defined in 236. Yes or no? So, here, why they have done so? In section 234, when I go, they say that go and read section 3. Why? Because for previous year, they have made a separate definition in section 3 because this is the most widely used word in the entire law. Most widely used word. And the most important word in the entire law, most commonly used word in the entire law, that is the reason the government is taking the pain of defining it separately. But at the same time, they are first of all mentioning in the series of section 2 and then defining separately. Otherwise, people will not come to know that it is defined in section 3. Generally, people where they will go to find the definition? Section 2. So, they should come to know that it is there in the series. I will not get a dream from the God. That the definition is given in section 3. That is once in a while case. You will not get the definition in section 3 all the time. So, first of all, they mentioned in the logical order of A to Z, and in one of the point they have mentioned that go to section 3, we have mentioned it separately. Okay. Now read. What is section 3 definition previous year? For the purpose of this act, a previous year means a financial year. A financial year is of how many months? 12 months immediately preceding the AY, okay. With that logic, with that logic, 98-99 is a previous year, which starts from which year, which date? 1-4-98. So, I can say my business is commenced in the previous year, that is from 1-4-98, right? But you will not be able to say so. Kajal was correct because there is a proviso to this definition. Proviso means? exception which says that if your business or profession is newly set up which is a, in our case it was newly set up in October right then the previous year will not start from 1st April but it will start with the beginning of the commencement of the business I hope you understood now what they are trying to do so in our case it will not start from 1st April but it will start from the date of commencement of business and please tell me when is my business commenced can I say my previous year is a shorter previous year from 1998 October to 31st March 99? Do you understand this? So, can I say till September that period can be called as a prior period? And the interest has to be capitalized. Naito, otherwise, what people will do, you know? Even if they start their business in March, they will say that this business is started in this previous year, na? Allow me the interest of first 11 months. Government will not allow you. Government will say what? Capitalized to the cost of asset. And did you understand what I said? Is everyone clear? Now, there is one ICDS also. ICDS means? Income Computation and Disclosure Standards. I have told you, na, beta? About that? Yes or no? Which also says the similar things only do not worry about it. There is nothing great said by ICDS. ICDS is not something which is very great part of your syllabus. It is a very small part of your syllabus. So, what does the ICDS says? 
There is one ICDS on tangible fixed asset. You also have accounting standard and India's for tangible fixed assets, right? What does it say? Admin and general overhead expenses are to be excluded from the cost if they do not relate to the asset. If they are not related to the asset, exclude from the cost. Okay. Similarly, if certain expenses are specifically attributable to a particular asset, then it should be included in the cost of asset. If an expenditure is related to that asset, include that as a part of the cost. Similarly, expenditure on startup, commissioning, etc., test run shall also be capitalized to the cost of asset. As I have told you, whatever test run, etc., you do, you have to add it to the cost of the machinery. Yes or no? Similarly, once the production is started, okay, after that, the expenditure should be treated as what? As a revenue expenditure. So, ICDS is not saying anything great to you. Don't worry about it. It is saying the same thing which you have learned in accounts and which you have learned in the last half an hour. Okay. So, I would like to sum up the discussion as of now of actual cost. So, let me sum up the discussion now. First of all, we saw the definition of actual cost. What is actual cost? Actual cost means actual cost, which will include all the cost which is necessary to put the asset into working condition. Right? Right. The second thing which we did over there was, once you buy an asset, you should not make a payment of more than 10,000 rupees to a person in a day by other than four modes. If you do that, that, that expenditure will not form part of actual cost. Okay. And the third and the most important thing, till the time the asset is not put to use, you can capitalize the interest cost. Once the asset is put to use, you have to take it in the PNR account. Then don't take it to the balance sheet. Then, then don't take it to the cost of asset. Clear? Now, one or two more things I will just explain before we take the break for the day because I always believe shorter the duration post break is better for us. One or two things. Pay attention on the board. Break, bola, kajal ke mupe khushi aagai, alag level ki. Itna khushi pichle teen ghande se padai mein bhi nahi aai. <laughs> Chalo, thik hai. That's very natural. Pay attention on the board. Under income tax law, keep this sentence in your mind forever. Assessee, do not get depreciation in the year of transfer. What do you mean by this? It means if I sell the asset in the current year. Then on that asset, you won't get any depreciation. Why? Because it will be reduced from the block now. It means even if you sell on 31st March, when? Then also you have used for 365 days and you have sold the asset on 31st March, you will not get the depreciation in this year. Because the block concept is very straightforward. Opening WDV plus purchase. Okay. Now, if you sell something, then it will be reduced from the block. And if it is reduced from the block, even on 31st March, if it is sold, you will not get depreciation on that asset, unfortunately, under income tax law. But in accounts, it is not like that. If you sell in the middle of the year, you claim depreciation for 6 months. Yes or no? But in tax, it is not like that. So, we always advise that if you are planning to sell at the end of the year, better you sell in the next year. Okay, so that you can claim some depreciation on it. Is it clear? Uh, if you have an urgency of funds and you have to sell, then you have to sell. Then that is a different case. Okay. And if you feel that if you further wait for one or two months, just the prices of the things will further go down, then you sell. That is your business decision. Then I cannot say. If you feel that if you sell today, you can sell it for one crore. If you sell after two months, it will be sold for 70 lakhs. Then sell today. Then sell today only. Then don't think much about depreciation. Okay, but in year of sale, you do not get depreciation. Let me tell you very clearly. In year of sale, you do not get depreciation. That is something which I would like to tell you. Okay. Now, in the definition of actual cost under section 43.1, there are certain explanations attached. In all, there are around 13 explanations. How much? Not one or two, but 13. These 13 explanations talks about certain special cost cases, special actual cost. You can say these are special actual cost. Here the actual cost is something different from actual. 
and this particular thing has been made, these exceptions have been made with three intention, either to give benefits to us or to clarify certain thing or to stop a mischief of us. Mischief in what sense? Mischief in tax evasion. The SSC is trying to evade tax and the government has made a provision to stop that mischief, to stop that evasion of tax. Whenever you will learn these 13 explanations now, once it is completed, today it is not going to complete because out of 13, around 5 to 6 explanations are going to be covered in the chapter of capital gains. I have written also in the bracket. See later, see later, see later with this section, see later with that section. You might forget that later on, but I will not forget that. Don't worry. I will come to this explanation again and again at the relevant time. One explanation is on scientific research. So, when I will be teaching scientific research section, I will come to this section. One explanation is on, say, some capital gains amalgamation. So, when I will be teaching amalgamation, I will come to this particular thing. But the 13 explanation which has been made, has been made with an intention of, of these three things. Either to give a benefit to us. Take the benefit. We are willing to give you this benefit. Second, we want to clarify certain things. There is a clarification required from our end. So, we are clarifying. And there is a mischief which we have to stop at assessee's end. That is the reason we have brought this particular provision. Okay. So, let us start with the first explanation for today. Pay attention on the board, please. I am Mr. A. And there is Kajal over here. Okay. Kajal, famous kar deta in India. Meru Kajal has given me some computers. Thike? As gift. How she has given me computer as gift. Now, please honestly speaking, tell me what is actual cost for me. Actually speaking, what is the cost? Obviously, nil, right? But the government is giving you some benefits. Don't worry about it. Come over here, page number 2.16. Explanation 2. 1 on 1A will be done later on. Don't worry. Okay. Explanation 2. Asset acquired by way of gift, circle gift or inheritance. Inheritance means? On the death of your or, or of your predecessors. Okay. Your father, your forefathers. Okay. Asset acquired by way of gift, what is the actual cost? Actual cost to the previous owner, that is actual cost to Kajal. Okay. Minus de depreciation actually allowed to her. Him or her is same only. Huh? Under income tax law, he, she, everything is same. That is a different thing which I will speak later on. Why the law is male dominated? Why they are writing everywhere he, 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 him, him, him? Why not her, her, her? She, she, she. Why not? That I will speak sometime later. Okay, don't worry about it. But you will not find her in the entire income tax law. You will not find she in the entire income tax law. You will not find the word she. You will find the word he. You will find, you'll find the word his. Not her, not she. Why the law is male dominated? We will talk about that sometime later. Okay. So, actual cost to Kajal minus depreciation actually allowed to her. Right? So, can I say whatever is the WDB in the hands of Kajal will become my actual cost? You can see this example below to further understand. Please go through this example. So, is the government giving you a benefit here? Is the government giving you a benefit? In case of gift, you are not paying anything. Still, you are going to get the depreciation on WDB of Kajal. Yes or no? Have you read? So, in first year, why it is 7.5%? Because it was used for less than 180 days in first year, right? That is the reason it is 
and later on it is 15, 15, 15 and why there is no depreciation in 20 to 23? Year of transfer, you go, don't get any depreciation. Kajal will not get depreciation in the year of transfer. Clear? Is it clear? Now, one last thing I am taking up as of now, then we will take a break. Pay attention on the board, please. Now, this is an important one, very important one. Mark down the next explanation, explanation 3, very important. Mark down. I will tell you with a very simple example. Okay. Here, there is Mr. A. Suppose this, this is me. And this is you. Yeah, Apo. Take up Koi views. Kajal, Bhavisha, Iram, Julie. This ka naam lena lo. Take Now, your mind is working in a negative way. Now, what kind of negative mind you are playing into over here? Listen carefully. I am doing a business. Okay. Listen carefully. I have some capital gain. Loss over here. Some 1.2 crore loss is available with me. Okay. How much loss? 1.2 crore loss is available with me. Can I carry forward that and set off against subsequent years income? It is allowed now. Listen carefully. This great tax planning by the SSC. SSC WDB of the asset is 10 lakhs. How much? 10 lakhs. Now, Assessi, I am getting arranged, I am getting an, into an arrangement with you all. With you all. What I am saying you? Are yaar, please purchase this now. He will say, why I will purchase this? And at how much price I should purchase this? I said, you will only be benefited, don't worry. My benefits are not there. More than me, you will be benefited. Okay, how? How I will be benefited at you are asking me. I said that I will sell you this Bhangar asset, this rusted asset for 1.3 crore rupees. How much? How much? 1.3 crore rupees. This is, this nobody will buy for even 5 lakh rupees. That I am trying to sell you for 1.3 crore. Can anybody stop me for that? If you are willing to pay. Can anyone stop me for that if you are willing to pay? You are saying that, okay, explain me further. Still, I didn't understand that what exactly you are trying to do. Then I said, I will sell you for 1.3 crore. You pay me 1.3 crore by bank account. Okay. Okay. And then I will give you cash under the table. Under the table. Okay. Not entire 1.3 crore, but some portion. Majority portion I will give you back. Okay. Clear. Now, what is the advantage? Tax advantage, what is there? Still, we didn't understand what is the tax advantage. Listen. I will have to pay capital gain tax because I am transferring the asset. And my asset is a block of asset. So, my sale consideration will be 1.3 CR. Right. And I have to take WDB of the asset as cost. Right or not, block of asset, you have to take WDB only. 10 lakhs will be my WDB, 1.3 my what? And this will be 1.2 crore ka capital gains, okay? And I will set off this capital gains with my capital loss, which is getting expired in next one or two days or in next one or two years. So, I will not be liable to pay any tax. And my loss, which was getting, which, which was about to get wasted in next one or two years, I have utilized that loss. So, I am at no profit, no loss. Okay. There is no profit, no loss for me. There is one thing that my loss was getting expired. So, I am utilizing that loss. So, even if it, it would have been expired, what difference would it make to me? Will it make any difference to me? Let it expire. Now, there will be great benefit to you all. You all will say that we have bought an asset for 1.3 CR. And you will start to claim depreciation on how much? 1.3 CR. Did you understand what I said? A Bangar asset, which is not worth even 5 to 10 to 15 lakh rupees, you are claiming depreciation on that asset for 1.3 CR rupees. Are you able to understand what I am trying to say? Everybody used to do this. What used to do for that? A Bangar AC is there over here, in my friend's house, in my friend's office. 
I will tell him that uh, give me this AC for 2 lakh rupees. I will take that AC for 2 lakh rupees, put it in my office. I will give him 2 lakh rupees and he will give me 1 lakh 70, 1 lakh 80 thousand in cash. Are you able to under, eventually I have got the AC for 30 thousand rupees only. I paid 2 lakh by check so that I can show my asset cost is 2 lakh and then he gave me 1 lakh 70 thousand in cash. So, what is the advantage that I will get? On a Bangara set of 30,000, I will get depreciation on 2 lakh rupees. Now, what to do? The department observed that such kind of arrangement is done regularly by so many SSCs now. So, they came up with explanation 3. And they say that we have to stop this mischief. This is a mischief, right? So, let us stop this mischief. Point number 3. Asset acquired at a higher price, is it? Is it acquired at a higher price from any other person using the asset for his business or profession with a view to claim depreciation on enhanced cost and reduce tax liability? In such cases, the actual cost would be determined by the assessing officer with prior approval of joint commissioner. And suppose if the assessing officer says that no, the FMB of this asset is only 15 lakhs, then he will cut 1.3 crore in your hands and he will write 15 lakhs. Did you understand what I said? And he will recompute your depreciation and he will increase your profits and he will, ta he will take taxes, interest, penalty, everything from you. So, do not buy anything at a extraordinary higher price. Slight margin would be sufficient 5 to 10 percent here and there. If it is 5 to 10 percent here and there, nobody would question you. But if you are buying this phone from someone for 10 lakh rupees, then obviously anybody would be having a doubt on you. Which phone is sold in market for 10 lakh rupees on a day to day basis? Yes, there are phones which are sold for 10 lakh rupees also, 15 lakh rupees also. Those are specially designed phones, etc. That is a different case. Which AC is sold in the market? You are showing in the balance sheet that you have bought this AC for 3 lakh rupees. Which normal ACs are sold for 3 lakh rupees? So, if you buy an asset, so this provision is from whose perspective? Seller or buyer? No, Bhavisha, it is not from seller's perspective. Whose perspective? Actual cost is in whose hands? It is from buyer's perspective, right? Now, this is called as Ek Tir Do Nishan. Let me tell you Ek Tir Do Nishan means what? One aim and two arrows. Everything I have to say in English, unfortunately. How this is Ek Tir Do Nishan? The government will say that your actual cost is not 1.3 CR. They will change that to 15 lakhs, for example. At the same time, they will not change this calculation. They will keep this 1.3 CR as 1.3 CR. Because explanation 3 talks about actual cost. It does not talk about changing the selling price of the seller. Seller selling price will remain 1.3 CR only. I do not know whether you got this point or not. So, seller will continue to compute capital gains at a higher price. But buyer's cost will reduce at a lower price. Did you understand what I said? So, do not change the seller selling price. If you have any doubt, please ask me. Do not hesitate to ask anything. Always ask me. Do not hesitate ever. Even if you feel that this is the silliest of the doubt. Do not worry about it. I am always there. Do not worry about it. Okay. What do I mean by it? The seller can also say, if you are making changes over here and making it 15 lakhs, then make this also 15 lakhs. Government is saying that, make this also 15 lakhs and make this uh, as what? As a capital gains of just 5 lakhs, so that I can use only 5 lakhs out of it and I can still have 1.15 lakhs, 1.15 crore ka loss with me available. The seller can also say, na. The seller can also say, then do not use the entire 1.2 crore ka loss. Only use the uh, 5 lakh rupees ka loss. Because the loss is only 5 lakh now. Are you clear or not? But the government said that no, no, no. Seller will not change the selling price. Ek tir do nishan. Seller will compute capital gains as per 1.3 CR only. And buyer actual cost will be redefined by AO with prior approval of joint commission. AO again alone cannot do anything. The moment while doing the assessment, if AO finds such things, how will this be practically done? Listen carefully. AO will do your assessment, right? He will go through our balance sheet, right? And he will ask you what are the additions you have made in the assets. You have to tell him. 
And suppose if he finds one of the assets you have bought at an excessively higher price, that will create doubt in his mind. He has also seen the world here. Yeah. You will say, I bought a TV for 35 lakh rupees. Then he would like to see that TV. Which is that TV? And you say that this is a 21 inch TV. Then how a 21 inch TV has to be of 35 lakhs? I would like to see that. He will come for a personal visit to your office. He will ask for that. He will see that this is not worth even 21,000 rupees. And you are paying 35 lakh rupees. Explanation 3 will be attracted. He himself cannot do anything. He has to ask to the joint commissioner. Are you able to understand? He has to take an approval from JC. And after that, he will determine the value in your hands. He will revive the value and he will change the actual cost. This entire example is given over here. You can see over here. This entire example, you can see over here. Mr. X is a seller. Mr. Y is a buyer. Seller has an opening WDB of 10 lakh, PGBP before depreciation of 4 lakh and PGBP and capital gain loss of 1 crore 20 lakhs. Okay. Now, seller sells the entire block for 1 crore 30 lakhs. So, the capital gains in the hands of seller will be 1 crore 20 lakhs. Okay. How it came? 1 crore 30 minus 10 lakhs. Clear? But he will set off the entire. They have just. Listen carefully, beta. They have decided the selling price based on this loss. Are you able to understand that? They have decided that selling price so that the loss and gain should come exact same to each other. Okay, now coming to buyer. Buyer will say that my profit is 50 lakhs. This is buyer's profit. Buyer's opening WDB of the asset is 20 lakhs. And now what buyer will do? Buyer will say 20 lakhs plus one more asset of 1 crore 30 lakhs I am buying. So, total 1 crore 50 lakhs. Yes. This is what buyer used to say. But now after explanation 3 to 43 1, AO will invoke this explanation and will say it is not 1 crore 30. It is just 15 lakhs. And he will say that now it is not 130 plus 20. But it is 15 lakhs plus 20. Is it clear to everyone? The 20 is your existing asset here. Forget about that. And last note but not least, the sale consideration of X will not change because of explanation 3. X will not change its calculation. X sale consideration will remain at 1.3 CR. Is everyone clear with this? So, the first explanation which we did was to give benefits to the SSE. This explanation is to stop the mischief of the SSE. Is it clear? Now, let us move on towards the next explanation. All of you, please pay attention on the next explanation. All of you. Suppose this is previous year 15-16. I am Mr. A. I bought a planted machinery of say 3 lakh rupees. Okay. Or say 1 lakh rupees. which is depreciable at 15 percent okay now i use this uh, in the current year i use this for the next year also but in previous year 17 18 i sold this to mr b okay and in next year in 18 19 mr b sold to mr c okay and in 1920, Mr. C sold to Mr. D. Okay. And then in 2021, I again purchased that from Mr. D for 5 lakh rupees. Okay. So, try to understand what exactly the mischief I am trying to do. I am trying to sell to one person, then I am telling that person sell to another person, then I am telling that third person sell to another person and then I am again reacquiring that. So, that that same asset is now costing me how much? 5 lakh rupees. Yes or no? Explanation 4 will attract. What will be the actual cost? Will that? What do you think? Will the actual cost will be 5 lakh? The answer is no. Explanation 4 will attract. Explanation 4. Very important explanation. Explanation 3 and 4 are very important. Mark down. 3 and 4 are extremely important. Explanation 4. A set once belonged to the assassin. Yes. Which was used by him for his business. And is transferred. And is reacquired. It is transferred. It is reacquired. Right. 
then what will be the actual cost in the hands of the SSC? Will it be 5 lakh rupees? The answer is no. The actual cost will be WDV at the time of original transfer or price paid for reacquiring the asset, whichever is less. So, what, what is the provision talking about? Can you tell me? The second point is this 5 lakh, correct? The price paid to reacquire the asset is 5 lakh. What is the first point? No, it is not 1 lakh. Read carefully. WDV at the time of original transfer. It means the WDV in 2017-18, right? Right or not? Whatever the WDV will come. So, reduce depreciation of 2 years from this. 15-16 depreciation has to be reduced. 16-17 depreciation has to be reduced. Whatever is the WDV, that will become the WDV at the time of original, tra original transfer. Original means the first one. When you transferred it, so WDB at the time of that transfer compared with reacquisition price that is 5 lakh, whichever is less will become your actual cost. Is it clear? So this case is applicable when you sell and then reacquire. Okay. So check it, the example below. You can check this example. Read this once. Go through this example, please. Then we'll go ahead. Done? Shall I go ahead? Now, explanation <coughs> 4A is there, 4A. It's not 5, it's 4A. Pay attention please. There are two persons. Mr. A, Mr. B. Now, there is a person who has bought some asset of 7 lakh and he has claimed some depreciation on it. Okay. Now, what is he doing? He wants this asset. He wants this asset for his business. Okay. He wants to use this asset. For example, this laptop I have bought. I am claiming depreciation on this laptop. I want this laptop, but still I am trying to do some mischief. Try to identify what mischief I am doing. I am selling this asset to my friend. He is my friend. Okay. Say I stole this for rupees, say 1 lakh 20,000. I am not selling at a very higher price, okay? Not very high. So that if I have sell it, it for very higher price, then explanation 3 will attract. Yes or no? The one which we did in the last session. I am not selling at a very higher price. I am selling at a normal price. I want this asset. Then why are you selling? Try to understand. Audio is coming, I guess. Please speak some. Some of you, please. Audio is coming. Julia, at your end, there is some issue. Can disconnect and then connect again. Try to understand. I need this asset. And I am using this asset since so many years. And currently, the WDB of this asset is, say, 60,000 rupees. How much? I have been depreciating this asset since last 4-5 years. Okay. So, currently the depreciation WDB of this asset is 60,000 rupees. Since 5 years, I am depreciating example. But still, I am selling it to my friend for 1,20,000 and then I am telling him that you lease back to me. 
See the arrangement that I am trying to do. I have a laptop in front of me. I am using that. I want to continue using it. But still I am selling to my friend so that he can claim depreciation. And then he will lease back to me. And I, I will again use it. Are you clear? So in this case, has the asset again came back to me for the use? In the form of lease. In this case, what will be the actual cost in the hands of Mr. A? Will it be 1,20,000 rupees? The answer is no. Read this paragraph carefully. Slightly tricky it is. Substitute with Mr. A and Mr. B. See on the board, please. Mr. A is friend. Mr. B is the person who was owning the asset earlier. Explanation 4A. Sorry, here. Asset acquired by an assessee. By an assessee means Mr. B. Mr. B is acquiring the asset, na? From another person. Another person is Mr. A. Right? Who has claimed depreciation. Yes, Mr. A has claimed depreciation. And the asset is leased back to such other person. Such other person, matlab, leased back to A. Clear? Then in that case, what will be the actual cost in the hands of B? What will be the actual cost in the hands of A? Sorry. Leased back to such other person means B. The return down value of the asset to the transferor. Who is the transferor over here? Who is the transferor of the asset? Who is transferring the asset? A is not transferor. A is not transferring. A is giving on lease. The transferor is B. Please try to understand very carefully this example and then substitute in the provision. B has acquired the asset, right? He is transferring the asset to his friend. Then his friend is not transferring. Transferring means sale. He is not selling. He is giving on lease. Relate this with example. This provision. Asset acquired by assessee. That is Mr. Again, I will just repeat it. Kuch mistake hai par, hai? I will just repeat it by looking at the example. Ne, meko khud ko confusion ho hai. A kone, B kone. Okay. Asset is acquired by an assessee. Assessee means what? A. From another person. From whom? From B. A has acquired from B. Who had claimed depreciation? B has claimed depreciation, na? And the asset is leased back to such other person. Such other person means what? Say, it is leased back to whom? Leased back to B, right? It is leased back to B. Then what will be the actual cost in the hands of A? The actual cost in the hands of A will be WDB of the asset to the transferor. Transferor means B. Yes or no? At the time of transfer to the SSE, in this example, it is how much? It is 60,000 rupees. Is it clear? It will not be 1,20,000 rupees. So, whatever is the WDP in the hands of the transferor, that will become your actual cost. Is it clear? Just write down this example below only. There is some space below. Write down there itself. Done? Done? Or write down. Aram, ho jayega to bolo. If you are done, then tell me please.
now so we have done four explanations so far first one was respect of gift if i receive gift from someone what will be the actual cost in my hands it will be the actual cost in the hands of the previous owner right minus depreciation actually allowed to that person in short wdv in the hands of that person will become my actual cost correct second if i sell some assets at a higher price to you then what will be the actual cost in your hands who will determine the actual cost in your hands the actual cost will be determined by whom the ao with prior approval of joint commissioner correct if i sell you and you sell to somebody else then somebody else to somebody else and then again you acquire then actual cost will be reacquisition price or wdb at the time of first transfer whichever is lower right and this one is the last one which we have just done okay now listen carefully leave aside the book pay attention on the board all of you please <coughs> leave aside the book pay attention on the board suppose in previous year 2021 there is one student mr a a ca student tells her father or mother that i want a laptop the parents ask why you need a laptop at this age i want a gaming laptop why you want a gaming laptop is there he says that the processor is very good and because of which i can view my lecture properly parents also listen to him and bought a laptop for him okay which is worth 1 lakh rupees actually not necessary to view lecture okay a gaming laptop is not necessary to view a lecture but his intentions were something else so he fooled his parents and bought a laptop okay now the moment i said this his intentions were not well he fooled her, his parents julie immediately put her headphone so that her father does not listen to this <laughs> I know that. I know uncle personally. I can call him and say, <laughs> he need not have to listen to my lectures. Julie, immediately she took her headphone and put, so that it is not louder in the room. Anyways, CA student is there. 2020-21, obviously he will not get depreciation because he is using for his personal purpose, right? Right. He will not get depreciation. So, 21-22. He is a student, obviously he will not get depreciation. 22-23, he is a student. Sir, how many, how many years he will be student? Try to understand, he is a CA student, not a normal student. Okay, He has to be student for a longer period of time. Now, for example, in 23-24, he became a chartered accountant. So, his parent asked, what will you do now? He said, I will practice. I want to be a practicing chartered accountant. I don't want to do a job. So his parents asked, you will require an office, you will require assets. So he said, I will arrange. I will work for 3-4 months in a company and I will arrange. Okay. I will do a job for 3-4 months. I will earn some money of 2-3 lakh rupees. And then I will use that to start with my office. Parents said, okay. Now, now he is starting his office. Okay. So he did everything. Now he is thinking about a laptop. So, he thought that since the business is new, let us use this laptop only, okay. Why to buy a new laptop? It is a good laptop, it is an expensive laptop, it can run for another 2-3 years. So, he is using this laptop. So, now my question is in front of you all. Will he get depreciation on this laptop because now it is used for business and profession? Will he get depreciation, beta? So, the question is what will be the actual cost of this asset? One lakh, who said? Abhisha? Why one lakh? Why one lakh? So you can play you can take one lakh as your actual cost. Let me tell you there is no separate explanation for this case. No explanation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Nothing is there. So, one information I am giving. No, no specific explanation. If no explanation is there, what is the actual cost? Actual cost is actual cost? Please tell me. Actual cost is actual cost now. 
Therefore, in this case, the actual cost of this laptop in the hands of that student who is now a chartered accountant will remain 1 lakh only. It will be actual cost means actual cost. That's it. Actual cost is actual cost only. Okay. Now, this logic is applicable to plant, machinery and furniture. This logic is not applicable to building because for building there is a specific explanation, explanation 5. Just listen to me carefully. Don't see in the books. Just wait. It means if I convert my personal plant and machinery into business plant and machinery, actual cost will remain actual cost. If I convert my personal chair into a business chair, my personal table into a business table, my personal TV into business TV, my personal sofa into business sofa, the actual cost will remain actual cost. There is no specific explanation for plant, machinery and furniture. Is it clear to all of you? But what about building? The government knows that building is very expensive asset. Yes or no? So, suppose if I buy a building in 2020-21, okay? Suppose if I buy a building in 2020-21 or say 1 crore rupees, for how much? 1 crore beta for personal purpose and later on in 23-24, okay? I use this building for business purpose, then I will claim depreciation, right? Then, then what will be our actual cost? Will it be 1 crore? The answer is no. Now, government says that. Read explanation 5. Read, please, all of you. Read. This is only for building. What I have written below. For plant, machinery and furniture, actual cost will remain actual cost. Can you see this? This explanation is specifically for building. Let us read together. Building used for private purpose and subsequently brought into what? Business use. Earlier it was used for what purpose? Private purpose. Subsequently it is brought into what? Business use. Clear? Then actual cost will be what? The cost of purchase or construction of the building. In my example, 1 CR. Correct? As reduced by the notional depreciation calculated at the depreciation rate. Listen carefully now. Applicable to the year of conversion for business use. So, you have to take the actual cost as 1 crore minus you have to reduce notional depreciation. What rate you will take? What will be the rate of depreciation? In my example, you can keep your books open and answer. Which year's rate of depreciation I will take to reduce depreciation of 2021, 21, 22 and 22, 23? Because in 23, 24, I have converted into business. Which year's rate of depreciation I will take? Check properly. I have converted in 23, 24. Please tell me, you will take the rate of, rate of which year? 23-24, okay? You will take the rate of 23-24. Now, this is one of the most hopeless provision that you could ever see in the income tax law. Why I am saying so? Listen carefully. Listen, wait, are you listening? Suppose, I have bought this building for 15 years back, okay? In 2007. 2008, I have bought this building for personal purpose. Now, in 20 to 23, I am using it for business purpose. So, as per this ghatia provision, this hopeless provision, I have to reduce the depreciation of 15 years now out of it. Yes or no? Yes or no? Then, there will be nothing left after that. Just imagine. First of all, the values 15 years back will be already lower. And out of that also, you will remove depreciation of 15 years. So what will be left after that? Hopeless provision it is. It is better to take a building on rent and do business. Rather than doing business in your own building. Because the depreciation benefit will be very negligible. Very negligible. Almost no. Are, are you clear? Secondly, why they are not telling you to take the rates of the respective year? They are not telling you to take the rates of the respective year. Na? They are telling you to take the rate of the current year in which you convert, right? The rates of the respective years are not said to be taken because it is practically very difficult to identify the rates of every year. Suppose if the building is 20 year old, then I have to check the rates of every year. Na? So, it is better you take the rate of the current year and depreciate for 20 years, correct? 
So that's what it is done over here. You can check an example below over here. Not much important for exam because this this uh, explanation is actually not much practically used. The previous three were important. Go through this example, please. If you are done, let me know, please. Done? Please tell me. Okay. Now, explanation 6, 7, 7, I am just keeping on hold for some lectures that will be done with capital gains after some lectures. I have written already over there. Explanation 8, I have already taught you. Once the asset is put to use, then the interest will not form part of actual cost, right? Once the asset is put to use, then interest will not go to the cost, na? It will go to the PNL account. Right? Now, explanation 9. Let us talk about this now. Pay attention, please. Suppose if I have bought a laptop from a vendor. Who is a vendor? Vendor is, say, HP. HP laptops. I bought a laptop of 1 lakh rupees. In that they have charged 18 percent GST. So, 18,000 rupees GST, 1 lakh 18,000 rupees total cost. Okay. Okay. Now, the government says that if you have claimed GST credit on this, what? Claim GST credit. You can? Can you claim GST credit on laptops? Yes, you can. So, if you have claimed GST credit, then our actual cost will be 1 lakh because you have already taken the benefit of that 18,000 in GST. Yes or no? You have an option. If you do not want to claim GST, like hotels, hotels and all do not get GST credit. Do you know that? Because they come under composition scheme. Okay. So, though they, they do not get GST credit. So, for them, it is advisable to take at 1 lakh 18,000. Is it clear? So, both option is available with the assessee. You can see over here. Read. Good. Explanation 9. Now, the government is in the old zone of earlier than 2017. GST has come in 2017. Still, they have not amended here. That is the reason I have also not amended. Today, excise and all has no role to play under income tax law. Yes or no? Clear? I put an example below also. Shall I go ahead, beta? 
Now coming to a big one and a very important one. Please pay absolute attention now. A very important one it is and a very big one. Explanation 10. Very, very, very important. Avisha. What does it speak about? Please pay attention. It's very important now. There is a great interlinking of few provisions now. A portion of a cost of an asset acquired is met directly or indirectly by government or any statutory authority or any other person in the form of a subsidy grant or reimbursement. Underline the word subsidy, underline the word grant, underline the words reimbursement separately or put in three boxes. Okay, now listen carefully all of you. If you acquire an asset and there is some benefit given by the government or statutory authorities or any person, anybody in the form of subsidy, grant or reimbursement, then that much has to be reduced from the cost of asset that is written over in these three lines you can read over here. Then that much has to be reduced from the cost of asset that shall not form part of actual cost. Clear? Clear? Now listen carefully all of you, please. Listen carefully. Shall I speak? Listen. Now there was one assassin who was doing such mischief. Listen carefully. And as he went to the government and said that I am starting with a new venture. For that I need 120 crore rupees. How much you are financing? The government said we will give you a subsidy of 20%. How much? 20%, which will amount to 24 crore rupees, right? Now, what he did? Now, he started with his venture. He purchased some building, some plant and machinery, some furniture. It's a building of 60 crores, plant and machinery of 40 crore and furniture of 20 crore. Okay. Now, he has got 24 crore as subsidy. Now, what is he doing? He is reducing this from this and this. He is not reducing from this. Try to understand his reason. You should be intelligent enough to understand that. Yeah. Why is reducing from building and furniture and not from plant and machinery? Please tell me why. Please tell beta. Iram, Kajal, Bhavisha, why? He has to reduce from the actual cost, right? 24 crore because somebody has met that portion. So, he has to reduce that. That is for sure. Now, he is reducing as per his own whims and fancies, wherever he wants to do. From wherever place he wants to reduce, he is reducing. He is reducing from building, say, 20 crore, furniture, 4 crore. But he is not touching plant and machinery. Why so? Higher rate of depreciation, not lower. Plant and machinery is depreciated at 15 percent. So, if you reduce this asset, you will lose 15 percent depreciation, right? But if you reduce this asset and this asset, you will not reduce 15 percent, you will reduce only 10 percent. Therefore, he is reducing from those assets which are depreciable at lower rate. It is very simple mathematics, right? So, the government made an amendment in the explanation and read. If the asset is not, if the subsidy is not directly relatable to the asset acquired, it is not directly related not to one asset, it is for the group of assets, right? But the subsidy is with reference to assets, assets means plural. Every word is important in law. You might not give importance to asset or assets. It is not like that, every word is important in law. But the subsidy is with reference to assets. Is it with reference to multiple assets? Then subsidy shall be reduced proportionately. You have to reduce it proportionately. You can see this example over here. Reduce 20 percent from this, which will be 12 rupees. Right? In this case, it is 30 percent. Okay? In the textbook example, it is 30 percent. 100 minus 30 is 30 percent, na? Please tell. 
So reduce 30 percent from this. 30 percent of this will be how much? 18. Reduce 18. That will give you 42. Everything is written here. You can see here. So if the subsidy is for one asset, reduce from that asset itself. If the subsidy is for multiple assets, this, this and one more, then reduce proportionately from all of them. Is it clear? Now, coming to this particular paragraph again, have you put this into boxes? Let us try to understand the difference between three of them. What is the similarity between three? All three are some kind of assistance for you. All three are some kind of help for you. Assistance for you. Now, what is the difference? Please tell. What is the difference between subsidy grant reimbursement? Please. How subsidy is different from reimbursement and grant? In case of reimbursement, we will purchase the asset and then government will give us the money. Okay. That is closed now. Let us talk about the other two. What is subsidy? Yes, you will get the asset at a lower rate. I will go to the government and I will say that I want an asset of 100 crore. Government will say, we will get you buy for 80 crore, don't worry. So, you are getting subsidized over there. And what is grant? Grant is nothing but government will give you the money and then you will purchase. Okay. Reimbursement and grant is same only, but the timing is different. In grant, you get the money first and then you incur. In reimbursement, you incur first and then you get the money. All three of them are same only. It is in the form of an assistance from the other person. That other person can be anybody, government, it can be authority, it can be any person at the end of the day, it is written from any other person. Yes or no? Now, I would like to ask you one question. Please try to answer that. Okay. You have to keep this provision in front of you. Which provision? The provision which we are learning as of now. Shall I ask you? There is an assessee. And there is government over here. And the assessee has taken a loan from government. Loan for fixed asset. Okay. Now the assessee is not able to repay the loan. Assessee is into losses. So he is not able to repay the loan. So he went in front of the government, beg in front of the government and said to the government that please waive my loan. So the government waived the loan. Say the loan was of 1000 crore and the government waived off 1000 crore. Does government do that? Wave off the loans? In general, nahi bol raho mein. otherwise, have you heard about it? Have you heard about it? Sometimes, yes, they do. Especially of farmers. They waive crores and crores of rupees of farmers every year in the form of loan given to them. Of industry also they waive. They waive loan of so many industrialists. So that that industrial uh, company does not close down. If one company is closed down, there are thousands and lakhs of people who can go unemployed, right or not? So the government has to give them the assistance. Government waived off. Waived off 1000 crore. So the question is, will this waiver be taxable in the hands of SSE? Or will this waiver, listen carefully, be reduced from the cost of the asset? Is waiver covered over here? What is covered? Assistance in the form of what? Subsidy, grant or reimbursement, not waiver, right? So, what if I take a loan from government and government waive that loan? Then what will happen with that? Am I supposed to reduce from the actual cost? I don't know. I don't know about that. Listen carefully. This is a very, very sensitive discussion. One second here and there and you will be out of the zone. Listen very carefully what I am trying to say. I have taken a subsidy from government to buy an asset. To buy an asset, I will reduce from the block of asset, right? But I have taken a loan from the government to buy this asset. And then the government waves off the loan. Then will I reduce that from the block of asset? First of all, explain, explain me, reducing from the block of asset will reduce your depreciation, right? And eventually will increase your profits, right? And eventually will increase your taxes, right? So, reduction is not a good thing for the SSE. That will reduce his depreciation, increase his profit, increase his taxes. So, the question is, if I buy a asset by taking a loan from government, 
and then asset is there in my balance sheet but the loan is waived off will that loan will also be reduced from the block of asset and the answer is a big no as you can see this explanation is only applicable for subsidy grant and reimbursement yes or no it is not available for waiver you will not reduce from block of asset do you agree but in finance act 2015 when the government has listened carefully beta please 100 percent attention i want of yours has amended the definition of income which is defined in 224 i have told you now income definition is there in 224 on in the first lecture the first lecture ka concluding discussion by making that graph 97.75 percent tax rate i guess you are you would have seen on google right so, have the government made amendments by putting unnecessary things in the definition of income? The same way the government has made an amendment in 2015 by amending the definition of income. Come to page number 2.22. Definition of income was amended by inserting a new clause, clause 18. Very carefully we need to read this. First of all, I would like to ask you, forget about this, please beta, all of you, please see here. If I get a subsidy grant or reimbursement for buying a fixed asset, what am I supposed to do? Reduce from the cost. If I get a loan from government to buy a fixed asset and that loan is waived off, shall I reduce from the cost? No, it is not covered in explanation 10, right? Don't, then what will I do with that 1000 crore rupees waived, which is waived off by the government? Direct income. It means forget about reducing from the cost of asset. Directly add to the income statement and pay tax on that. Did you understand this great difference? Reducing an amount from a cost. Listen carefully. Reducing an amount from a cost is a slow poison. Which will reduce your depreciation every year which will reduce your taxes, which will increase your profits every year and which will increase your taxes every year. But, but making entire amount as income in the current year is a, is a hard poison. So, the government has given a hard poison to the citizens of this country in 2015. On one hand, listen carefully. On one hand, they give you subsidy. They waive your loan. On other hand, on their waiver of loan, they take tax also. एक हाथ दिया दूसरे हाथ से थोड़ा बहुत ले लिया पूरा नहीं लिया थोड़ा बहुत नाउ व्हाट ऑल थिंग्स दे हैव इंक्लूडेड लेट्स सी हाउ दे हैव वाइडेंड द बेस ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड ऑलवेज द गवर्नमेंट विल इंक्रीज द एक्स एक्सिस वाई एक्सिस दे विल नॉट वाई एक्सिस दे विल नॉट टच बाय इंक्रीजिंग द एक्स एक्सिस दे विल इंक्रीज द टैक्स नॉट बाय इंक्रीजिंग द वाई एक्सिस लिसन केयरफुली इनकम इंक्लूड्स व्हाट असिस्टेंस इन द फॉर्म ऑफ Form of what? Subsidy is income. Subsidy is income. Yes. Grant is income. Cash incentive is income. Circle subsidy, circle grant. Cash incentive is income. Duty drawback is income. Waiver is income. Waiver of that 1000 crore is now direct income. Forget about reducing from the cost of asset. Direct add to the income statement and pay tax. Concession is an income. Reimbursement circle is an income by whatever name called. Government is tired now. Government is tired of saying the words. Now they say that by whatever assistance. Assistance by whatever name called. Are you understanding? Now this is given by whom? All these things are given to you by whom? That also needs to be seen. This is given by central government. Modi ji. This is given by state government, Eknath ji, if you stay in Maharashtra or respective state, whatever you are. This is given by authority, local authority like BMC and all, like Shiv Sena in Mumbai. It is given by any statutory bodies like RBI, etc. or any statutory agency. These are the five people who are giver. It can be given in cash or kind to the SSE. That's it. Just wait here. Just wait here. So, who is giving? Central government, state government, any body, agency, authority, right? These are all, all statutory people. 
governmental level people. Okay. What are they giving? If they are giving you subsidy, it is income. Listen carefully. Very minute point. If they are giving subsidy, that is income. What I said, if they are giving you, then it is income. But sir, here it is written, if you get a subsidy, you will reduce on the cost of asset. Then what to follow? Then what to follow? Should I take that subsidy? I am just raising a question. I am not asking you the answer. If I receive a subsidy of 50 lakh rupees from the government to buy asset, okay. So, explanation 10 will attract. I have to reduce from the asset cost. But at the same time, it also becomes income. So, what am I supposed to do? That is the reason the government has excluded over here. Other than you see over here. They have excluded subsidy grant and reimbursement which is covered in explanation 10. It means whatever happens in explanation 10 will happen like that only. Otherwise, both the sections will clash with each other. Are you able to understand? If the subsidy is for fixed asset, then reduce from cost only. Do not come here. If the grant and reimbursement is for fixed asset, then reduce from cost only. Do not come over here. Yes, if the subsidy is for other than fixed asset, then you can come over here and treat it as income. Are you clear? Keep explanation 10 your, in your mind very clearly. I am again asking. Explanation 10 is for fixed assets. It is for three things. So, if you get those three things for a fixed asset, always reduce from cost. That is it. Are you clear? So, just I am asking you for the sake of asking some question. If I get a subsidy for say electricity bill, government is saying you pay electricity bill, we will subsidize it. What will I do? So, it has income, right? Government is saying uh, you take subsidy and buy raw material. What will I do? So, it has income, raw material is not a fixed asset. Yes or no? Sub government is saying uh, take subsidy for buying plant and machinery. What will I do? Reduce from the cost of asset. Listen carefully. Now, what I am asking you, listen carefully. Read this definition if you want at your end. That is the reason I have circled subsidy grant and reimbursement for you. Yes or no? Because that if it is in relation to fixed asset, that cannot come over here. I will make a proper chart for you all. Do not worry. Okay. Of this particular discussion, we will make a chart. So, that, that is eased out. But shall I ask some questions before that? When did this definition came? In 2015. Now, when this definition came in 2015, do you know earlier, now the government do not give anything. Do you know earlier, government used to give you LPG subsidy? Do you know anything in this world? Do you read newspaper and all? I will not say do you watch news channels. Do not don't watch. That is not good for health. If you want to watch, watch some good English channel. Hindi channel do not watch only. That is a drama, not a news channel. But at least news newspaper has to be read by a student. <coughs> if not newspaper, at least the Times of India app has to be opened sometimes. Do you know that government used to give you LPG subsidy? 200 rupees, 300 rupees on every cylinder. Do you know that? So, people asked, started asking question after this amendment. What question? That subsidy is income, right? If subsidy is income, then well, whether that LPG subsidy given by the central government to us, that will also be income. Yes or no? Yes or no? Whether this question will be arised or not? I am not saying whether that is income or not as of now, but I am just raising a question. Or the government has given me some subsidy for, for further education. Because I am differently able. I am handicapped. So, government has given me some subsidy. Does the government do that? For my further education. Because I am a bright student, so government gave me because I am differently able, I am handicapped. So, will that also be called as assistance given by the government and it will be taxable in my hand in the form of income? People will kill the government. Okay. <clears throat> See here, the government has issued a press release in 2015. Now, what is a press release? A press release is different from a circular. Circular is issued by CBDT 
for SLS is also given by CBDT, but this has this comes in case of emergency. If they have to say something in emergency, they bring a press release. They bring a press conference and the finance minister speak in that. So, people were very angry that 200 rupees at least you are giving to us every month and that also you want taxes. Then why are you giving us that 200 rupees also? Government said that our intention is not to take taxes from this LPG subsidy. Check here. Now the LPG subsidy is withdrawn by the government. Nobody gives you LPG subsidy today. It was there earlier till 2018 I guess. Now it is not there only. <laughs> Clear? So, if the subsidy grant reimbursement is in with respect to business, then only it is taxable. If it is for your personal benefit, education purpose or LPG purpose, then it is not taxable. Is it clear? Again, I am asking. The definition which is over here, you can look and answer. Who is giving you the benefits? Go which government? Tell me completely. Complete list. Central government, state government, any authority, any body, any agency. That's it. Full stop. This is an exhaustive list. Okay. Now, this amendment again I am saying came in 2015. And the one of the funniest thing with that happened in 2015 is as follows. Listen carefully. What funniest thing had that happened in 2015? Finance Act 15, the government brought an amendment. In section 2, 24-18. Okay. Now, the budget is on 1st of Feb every year. I don't know whether you have listened budget ever or not. I am not aware of that. I don't think so. You would have listened also budget. Have you heard any budget so far on TV live? No, sir. What is there to understand, sir? It's not that easy for everybody to understand that. But the budget is generally on 1st of Feb every year. It starts at 11 a.m. in the morning, ends approximately at 1 p.m., approximately at 2 hour session, where the finance minister will speak continuously. And what all she will speak? Listen carefully. Bhavisha, what all she will speak? She will speak about different aspects, not only taxation. Taxation is one of the part of the budget. She will speak about different schemes of the government that government is going to implement in future. She is going to speak about how the funds will be allocated different to different sectors of this country. For example, the finance minister will say, I propose to allocate 10,000 crore rupees for this scheme. I propose to allocate 20,000 rupees for health scheme. I propose to allocate 30,000 rupees for 30,000 crore rupees for education scheme. I propose to allocate 50,000 crore rupees for the purpose of say education purpose or for farmers development i propose to allocate 20000 crore rupees for women safety i propose to allocate this much money for this this much money for that this much for this this much for that that is the way the budget is allocated and based on whatever is the allocation government will bring tax amendments so that that much tax also should be recovered now ultimately it's a pnl account for government also from where will Modi ji bring the money? It has to be from you only and me only. So, the allocation of funds at different scheme has to be aligned with the taxation amendments that GST increased. Something was exempted in GST, put that in GST. Increase the tax base by including subsidy in the definition of income, increase tax. Tax on virtual digital asset like crypto, you might be knowing from this year crypto is taxed. Are you aware of that or not? We need to learn the taxability of crypto in our syllabus. How crypto will be taxed? We need to learn that also how crypto will be taxed. What does crypto means? What all things will come in the cryptocurrencies? Are you clear? So, the finance minister is allocating funds. The way she is distributing funds. 50,000 crore for this purpose, 20,000 crore for this purpose, 30,000 crore for this purpose, 10,000 crore for this purpose. Now, the question is, how will that be implemented? How will those schemes, those schemes have to be implemented now? In practicality, suppose if I am giving 30,000 rupee crore for Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, 
तो देर हैज टू बी समबडी हु विल डू समथिंग फॉर स्वच्छ भारत ना हु विल कीप डस्टबिन विल बाय डस्टबिन He will create awareness, put banners. That money has to be utilized somewhere, na? Suppose if I allocate thirty thousand crore rupees for clean Ganga program, so that has to be done, na? Through to some process, Ganga has to be cleaned. So for that, what the government do? They do. I am not saying. I am not blaming anybody that they do not do anything. I am not saying that. For that, what they do? They create a trust. They will create multiple trusts. For every objective, there will be a trust. a separate trust or association will be created suppose the first one is for women safety so the nirmala sitaraman ji will say give him 20000 crore rupees they will take care of women safety okay and it is their duty to convert to do women safety in india whatever they want to do they want to create awareness they want to put cctv everywhere they want to put marshals everywhere they want to increase police officers etc whatever they want to do so nirmala ji is saying that give uh, 50000 crore to this trust now another trust why ma'am for what purpose स्वच्छ भारत अभियान तो दे विल डू फुट डस्टबिन एवरीवेयर दे विल क्रिएट अवेयरनेस दे विल पुट पोस्टर एवरीवेयर यस और नो नो द फनीएस्ट थिंग दैट हैपेंस ओवर इयर इज व्हाट इज असेसिंग ऑफिसर डूइंग यू नो असेसिंग ऑफिसर इज सेइंग दिस ट्रस्ट दैट दिस ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड करोड़ रुपीज इज इनकम इन योर हैंड बिकॉज इट इज एन असिस्टेंस फ्रॉम सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट आर यू एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से it will blow your mind are bhai central government is giving money for its own work not for others work it is just that nirmala sitaraman ji herself cannot do everything na there has to be an association who such big work of 30000 crore 40000 crore cannot be done by one entity so they make separate institutions for that and allocated the work to different institution now the assessing officer is saying that you will be liable to tax government said bhai we are making amendment don't worry okay so they made second exclusion other than second point this is not subject to tax what is written beta tell me read every point has a logic unless and until i give you the background you will not understand the things now if, if we could have directly read this paragraph i could have said that central government if give anything to anybody then it is not taxable i could have completed my discussion like this but i will never do that that will not engage you in the subject you will not understand the subject in a proper manner and you will not remember also for a longer period of time now if i make a reference of nirmala sitaraman ji you will try to recall it at least so let us read other than point number b point number b is not covered what is covered in point number b the subsidy or grant by central government who is giving subsidy or grant central government for the purpose of the corpus of the trust or institution established by underline trust is established by whom or state government central government can give the money to the state government trust also so the giver is central government and the taker is receiver is state government or central government both but the giver is central government be very careful and one word is not written over here can you imagine that which word is not written over here subsidy and grant is written reimbursement is not written because reimbursement becomes illogical here let me tell you how the government cannot tell nirmala sitaraman ji cannot tell the trust 50000 crore kharcha kar de main deti hu <laughs> He cannot say the trust incur fifty thousand crore. I'll give you. You have to give first. Then only that trust will be able to do. Are you able to understand, beta? That is the reason reimbursement will not be found over here. Are you clear? Okay. Now, I would like to ask you a question. Listen carefully. Then we'll make one chart, small chart. Shall I ask you? Let's see whether you answer properly or not. Even if you answer, don't answer properly. It's okay, but at least try. There is Asasi. Shall I go ahead? There is ICICI Bank. I have taken a loan from ICICI Bank for fixed asset. Okay. Shall I go ahead? And of five hundred crore. and later on icici bank waived off that loan whether it will be an income under section 22418 read and tell me don't say yes or no the speed at which you are answering even a chief justice of india will not answer at such a speed he will also think once 
After I ask a question. And then he will answer. Please tell. Please tell. ICICI Bank is waiving my loan for fixed asset. Will it be taxable? Will it be covered in the definition of income? Yes or no? No? Why no? The answer is no. It will not be taxable. Listen carefully. Why no? Because this section is applicable only if these things are given by a central government. Is ICICI a central government? State government? Any authority? Any body? Any agency? It is a company. The word company is not written over here. Are you able to understand what I am trying to say? So, this section is applicable only if it is given by these five people. Okay. So, I am making one chart over here. Chart for subsidy, etc. Just wait. You can take a photograph of this chart later on and maintain a notebook for the same. And whatever chart I will tell you, take a photograph and write down in the books on the same day, please. Listen carefully. If there is a subsidy, grant, or reimbursement for fixed asset from any person, then what to do? Do not answer. Do not answer. Okay. Shall I go ahead? If I get subsidy, grant, reimbursement, waiver, concession, UT drawback, okay, from government, body, agency, authority, then what to do, from Others like company, firm, LLP, etc. Then what to do? Third, subsidy or grant given by central government to a central government or state government trust. Then what to do? Will you tell me? Pella wala kya karu? What has to be done with the first one? Reduce from cost. Second one? Third one? or not taxable, whatever. Fourth one, not tax. Is everyone clear? Take a photograph of this beta. Okay. Okay. So all this discussion came from where? All this discussion came from here. This is explanation 10. This is from where we started, right? And we have combined all the discussion into one chart. That is it. Clear? And LPG subsidy is something which you will remember. Do not worry about it. Now, let us go to the next explanation, the last explanation as of now. Last explanation, explanation 11. Shall I start? Now, listen carefully. What is this explanation all about? 
there is a non resident who is in USA and he is doing some business in USA. Okay. And there he has purchased some computers of say 1 lakh. Okay. In previous year 15, 16. Okay. Now in 2022 23, he wants to come to India and do business. So, when he is coming to India to do business, he is bringing this computer to India and he will use that computer in India. Okay. Shall I go ahead? So, see the condition. Non resident is what? Is in US doing his business, he has purchased computer. Now he is coming to India to business to do business in India and he is bringing that same computer to India. So, will he be taxable in India now? Because he is doing business in India, his income is accrued in India, right? So, now he will ask depreciation on this computer because his income is taxable, he will ask for depreciation, right? So, this question will be what will be the actual cost of this depreciation, correct? So, see this particular explanation, explanation 11 to section 43.1, asset brought into India by NR or foreign company for use in its business or profession. So, NR is bringing, non-resident is bringing the asset in India for its business or profession, is it clear? So, what will be the actual cost? Actual cost that is 1 lakh as reduced by the amount of depreciation calculated at the rates in force as if the asset was used in India since the date of acquisition. Assume that if the asset would have been used in India since 2015-16, then how you would have depreciated the asset? The same way you depreciate and arrive at the cost. Are you clear? Are you clear? Just go through this example once. Now, in this example, just initially the rate of depreciation is taken at 60%. Listen carefully because earlier the computers were depreciable at 50%. You might 60%. You might not be aware of that. From 1920, it became 40%. That is the reason I am taking like this. You don't have to remember that in exam. In exam, they will give you the change of rate if it is there. Okay. If in earlier year the rates are changing, they have to tell you. You cannot remember the rates of every year, nor it is written in the study material. Okay. Now, there are some ICDS which I will be taking care of tomorrow only, not today. Okay. Just give me a second. Just give me a second.
clear so how many explanations we have done so far let's go through it once we will try to recap after some time explanation 2 1 explanation 3 2 4 4 a total 4 5 6 7 8 9 total 9 explanation we have seen so far out of 13 right the rest also we will see after after a few lectures not today at least okay now i am going ahead with some uh, small discussions now pay attention on the board please all of you and we will try to recap uh, whatever we have done in depreciation in today's lecture at the end of last 20 minutes okay and at that time it will be your duty to answer the thing my job will be done at that time that will be your session not my session now uh, there are one or two small things which i would like to tell you there are some ICDS which I will speak tomorrow, not today. Now, I will be speaking about this uh, set off and carry forward of unabsorbed depreciation. Okay. Now, unabsorbed depreciation. Unabsorbed depreciation means that depreciation which is not getting absorbed in the current year because of shortage of income. There is no sufficient income in the PL account of the SSE. Therefore, there is some amount of depreciation which is getting unabsorbed. Okay. So, what is the treatment of that? There is a very special treatment given by the government. Section 32, subsection 2, unabsorbed depreciation. Generally, if there is a loss, <coughs> listen carefully. Generally, if there is a normal business loss in the business, the government tells you to carry forward that business loss for 8 years. How many years? How many years? 8 years it is allowed. Okay. But unabsorbed depreciation is something which is allowed forever. There is no time limit in that. It is allowed till infinity. I hope you might be knowing this. Right. Second, generally, if there is a loss, it is allowed to carry forward and set off only against same income. Means if there is a business loss, then it will set off only against business income. If there is a house property loss, it can carry forward and set off only against house property income. If there is a capital gain loss, it can carry forward and set off only against capital gains income. Right. But UAD is so special that government says that. UAD can be first set off, first, priority wise, first set off against PGBP and then set off against any income, any income except salary. UAD is so special to the government, so close to the heart of the government that it can be carried forward and set off against any income except salary income. It can be set off against house property income, it can be set off against IFOS income, it can be set off against capital gains income also except salary. And then if you want to carry forward to next year, next year also first against PGBP, believe me, and then against any income except salary. Any income except salary. My question to you all is, why such special treatment to UAD? Please, give some light on this. Throw some light on this. Please. Think, 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 think. In next two and a half months, I will make you think like anything. You have to think. Say anything, yeah. It's okay. You have come to learn over here. <laughs> Please say. Or at least say, I don't know. We don't know, sir. Forget about this. Okay, leave aside all these things. Yeah. Tax, wax, to padte rengi. Let me ask you something. What are you planning to do after becoming a chartered accountant? One by one, please. Ajal. You might have thought something, na? Kuch to socha hoga. Job, otherwise practice. Kitna percent kya chance hai? Initially. Okay. Job. Julie? Yes, Zuli. Jobi tera naam hai. Job, job. Okay. Iram? That is a job only. Right? Bhavisha? 100% ratio is job. 
to the extent of the people I have asked. Okay. So whomsoever I am asking, they are saying job only. Why you don't want to do business? Please tell me. Why you don't want to do a business? Then you will do business. Definitely Kajal, very confident girl. Okay. Now, one of the primary reason why we do not go for business is you have a fear. You have fear that even if I earn money and say invest 10 lakh rupees in what? In my business. What if the business does not run 10? Right? What if the business does not run properly? Then what will happen? Then your money will be lost. So, I started a business. I bought a plant and machinery of 4 lakh, furniture of 2, 3 lakhs, another plant and machinery of 3 lakhs. Total, I invested 10 lakh rupees in my business. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I invested 10 lakh in my business. I started my business first year. Will I get depreciation on all these things? <coughs> Sorry. Yes or no? So, suppose in first year I got a depreciation of 1.5 lakhs, but there is no sufficient income. No sufficient income. Okay. So, this will remain unabsorbed, right? Similarly, second year also, there is 1.2 lakh depreciation, no sufficient income. So, this will remain unabsorbed. And third year also, there is 1 lakh rupees loss because of depreciation, unabsorbed depreciation, no sufficient income. And in the fourth year, I gave up. I gave up. Now, I cannot survive without money. Now, I cannot survive just incurring the expenditure and bearing the losses. So, I gave up. But at least you tried. At least you tried. So, government is giving you a benefit to try this investment. This investment was a trial and error by you, right? Please tell me. And this loss is coming because of the capital investment, right? Government tells you, don't worry, start the business. If there is a loss because of capital investment, we will secure that loss for you forever. Don't worry about it. At least start. Don't fear about the loss. If there is a loss, we will allow to carry forward and set up against other incomes. But up to up to when? Up to infinity till the time you die. If you are a 20 year old, 20 year old businessman, and if you live till 80 years, we will we will carry forward that for 60 years. Don't worry. Don't worry. So this benefit is given to those people who take the risk of making investments. Are you able to understand? And the risk of investment comes out of fixed assets. And UAD also comes out of fixed assets, right? Now, I am asking you one academic question. This was just a general knowledge question. Academic question, please tell me. You have a PGBP of 10 lakhs, okay? You have a PGBP of 10 lakhs and you have three things in front of you. Broad forward loss is there of say 5 lakh, okay? Unabsorbed depreciation is there of 6 lakhs and current year depreciation is there of 4 lakhs. You have these three things. Okay. Now, what will be the priority of set off? What will you set off first and what will you set off later? The first of all, current year depreciation, Kajal. Why so, beta? Why? At every question, there will be a why. You are absolutely correct. First current year depreciation because it is mandatory to claim depreciation. Yes or no? It is mandatory to claim depreciation. You cannot ignore depreciation. You have to claim current year depreciation as a mandate. Then, then losses. Why loss? Because it will expire in 8 years. Yes or no? So, something which will expire in 8 years, you have to take that first. UAD is there with you till your death. Don't worry about UAD and then UAD. Is it clear? So, please mark this particular priority as very important for exam. They will ask you this in exam, please. Page number 2.10, all of you.
क्लियर बेटा ओके सो नाउ व्हाट विल डू विल डू वन थिंग व्हिच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड दैट इज विल जस्ट ट्राई टू सी वेयर वी स्टैंड एज ऑफ नाउ एज फार एज डेप्रिसिएशन इज कंसीडर्ड कम टू द फर्स्ट पेज ऑफ दिस चैप्टर व्हेन यू रिवाइज यू रिवाइज डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम समरी बुक इट्स ओके कलर बुक ओके Let's start with the discussion. In case of building, building is defined. Machinery, machinery is defined. Plant, plant is defined. How it is defined? Plant includes what? Excludes what? At least plant excludes what? Ship is not excluded. Ship is included. Meri ma. What does plant excludes? Please tell. Tea bushes. Livestock, furniture and building. Tea bushes, livestock, furniture and building. Where is it defined? It is defined in 43.3. Tomorrow I will ask you questions. Please read and come. Then furniture is not defined, right? Goodwill is not subject to depreciation. From when? 2021. Earlier we, we used to get depreciation on goodwill. What about the goodwill which we have purchased in earlier years? Will we get depreciation in the current year for that goodwill? So, when we are supposed to deduce from the block in 2021, right? Clear. Okay. Then next, for claiming depreciation, you need to own the asset. Owner means what? Beneficial owner or legal owner? Beneficial owner or legal owner? Beneficial owner, not legal owner. Are you clear? Then, see over here. See at me. Please. In case of lease, who will claim de depreciation? In case of higher purchase? Purchaser. Now, try to remember that example of leasing of car. The company was leasing car for a long term basis to the consumer. The car is was in whose name? Customer's buyer's name, right? Who will claim the depreciation on that? Customer will claim or company will claim? The department was making an argument that customer is the legal owner. Legal owner doesn't matter. The department was making an argument that customer is driving the car. Driving doesn't matter. Who is using in the course of business that matters. Right or not? Next. Listen carefully one by one. You need to use the asset for the purpose of business. Yes or no? Use means what? Don't see in the book. Sir, uthake baat karo sindagi mein. Use means what? Active and passive use both. Emergency use is also covered as a part of use, right? Then comes, listen carefully. If I am not able to use my asset because of some extraneous reason, then will I get the depreciation? Huh? Yes, you will get. Shall I go ahead? If I acquire an asset and put to use for less than 180 days in that previous year, then the depreciation will be? <laughs> depreciation will be? Half. What if I acquire in current year and put to use for less than 180 days in the next year? Then? Full depreciation will I get in the next year? Yes, full depreciation you will get in the next year. Are you clear? Next, pay attention please all of you. Shall I go ahead? Next is additional depreciation. Let me ask you some questions on additional level. Which, which associate will get additional depreciation? Engaged in what? Manufacturing and? 
generation and distribution of power correct they have to acquire something new plant and machinery now i am asking you ship chalega ship 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 will not be allowed aircraft second hand plant and machinery office appliance guest house appliance road transport vehicle not allowed a machinery on which you have claim 100% appreciation earlier allowed not allowed all these machineries are excluded from the definition of new plant and machinery will additional depreciation also become half if i put to use for less than 180 days what about the balance half will i get in the next year please tell me then let me think if i am engaged in the business of publishing will i get additional depreciation if i am engaged in the business of publishing will i get additional depreciation then who will get Printing and publishing both has to be done, then it is mandatory, right? Then it is allowed. Both are mandatory or only printing is allowed? Only printing is also allowed? Okay, fine. That is it. That is what additional depreciation is all about. Very simple. Now, coming to the dangerous one. The depreciation is allowed on WDV of the asset and WDV is defined where? 43.6. Pay attention here, don't see in the books. 43.6, what is WDV? Please tell me. Actual cost minus depreciation actually allowed. Don't use your general words. Minus depreciation actually allowed means what? What do you mean by actually allowed? Please tell me. That depreciation which has saved your tax, right? So, there are two exceptions now. First, unabsorbed depreciation is obviously not allowed in the current year. That is the reason it is unabsorbed. Na? It is obviously not allowed in the current year. That is the reason the government has said that it is deemed to be allowed in the current year and reduced from the block, right? And second exception, I am saying it from this time. Next time onwards, I will not say. You have to answer. Second exception, your business is partially taxable and partially exempt, right? right or not then also you will reduce the entire depreciation from the block correct entire depreciation has to be reduced from the block of asset shall i go ahead now coming to the discussion of actual cost what is actual cost which is defined in 431 actual cost means actual cost as reduced by Cost met by any person, that is it, sufficient. Now, after that, that 10,000 rupees wala provision, what was that? What all modes are allowed? Tell me the allowed modes. Account page check is allowed. Draft is allowed. ECS is allowed. Such other electronic mode is allowed in which debit card, credit card, net banking, etc. is there. IMPS, RTGS, NEFT, all of them are there, right? Can I make can I make a cash payment up to 10,000 rupees? Then it is allowed. Can I make a cash payment of 99,000 rupees in 10 days? Can I make a cash payment of 99,000 10 times in a day? No, that is not allowed. Okay, aggregate has to be seen in a day. Then, direct I will ask you. If I take a loan for an asset and the asset is not put to use, then what to do? Once the asset is put to use, then what to do? Revenue expenditure 3613, right? And then comes the explanation. Start fast. Suppose Kajal has given me some gift. Then what will be the actual cost in my hands? Cost to the previous owner minus depreciation actually allowed to previous owner. Suppose you have sold me something at a higher price, more than what is the market value. 1 lakh rupees asset you are selling me for 7 lakh rupees. What will be actual cost in my hands? It will be determined by AO with himself, Suomoto. It, he will take an approval from joint commissioner, right? Now, third explanation. Explanation 4. I am Mr. A. 
I am selling asset to Mr. B, Mr. B is selling to Mr. C, Mr. C is selling to Mr. D and Mr. D is again selling to me. Then what will be the actual cost when I again reacquire? WDB at the time of original transfer when A sold to B, right? WDB at the time of original transfer or reacquisition price, whichever is lower, right? Now, you bought an asset, you bought an asset, you are using an asset, you are depreciating an asset, now you are selling it to me and then I am leasing back to you. Then what will be the actual cost in my hands? WDB in your hands, right or not? Please tell. Now, if I bring my personal building, sorry, personal plant, personal machinery, personal furniture into, into business, all personal into business, what will be the actual cost? Actual cost. What if I bring my personal building into business? What will be the actual cost? Actual cost as reduced by notional depreciation, right? Then GST portion, GST point was very simple. If you have claimed GST credit, then don't ask for depreciation, right? Clear or not? Next. Pay attention over here. And then comes the last thing which we did today. I hope you remember the discussion of subsidy grant and reimbursement, right or not? Last thing which I would like to ask you is the rates of depreciation also I will ask just for the sake of asking. Ship is depreciated at how much percent? 20 percent, okay. Air ship is 20 percent. I am not saying you are wrong, I am just asking. I am not saying you are wrong. I am just asking for the sake of confirmation from your side. 20 sure. Aircraft. Motor vehicle purchased on 25th of November 2019. Motor vehicle purchased on 25th of November 2019. Sure. Kajal ka ratta perfect hai ekdom. Huh? 30% sure? Kaise? How 30%? How? When? For whom? 21st September ni, 23rd August 2019 to 31st March 2020. Right or not? 15% extra, you will get 30%. Perfect beta, perfect. Excellent. Windmill? 40%. Professional books? 40%. Residential building? 5%. Temporary structure of building? 40%. Computer? 40 Then, goodwill? 0. Nothing. Patent? 25 percent. Then pollution control equipment 40 percent. Pollution control equipment is also 40 percent. Okay. So, these are the rates which you have to remember. They will not give you an exam. Let me tell you very clearly. They will not give you the rates. You have to remember. And if nothing is mentioned, then plant and machinery would be 15 percent. Furniture 10 percent. Building 10 percent. Okay. Okay. So, this is where we stand as far as our depreciation is considered. So, let us stop the lecture here today. I cannot start with a new concept now. And tomorrow we will continue depreciation. Tomorrow we will complete depreciation and then we will move on to the next topic that is other specific deductions. Okay. Is it clear? At the same time, I request you all to just revise. Even if you sit for half an hour, 45 minutes, most of the things will be revised. Do it from the color book. In case you are not able to understand from the color book because it is early, too early. You can open the textbook and understand in detail. Textbook is for that purpose only, okay, to understand something in detail. Chalo, bye all of you, take care. See you tomorrow. And come on time, please.